Hello and welcome back to Dial H for Hero Clicks. I'm your sexy ranch and co-host Calder Ness. This episode, we're going to be talking about some light news as well as a super cool event that's going to happen this year at Worlds in Memphis, Tennessee, as well as do a brand new Thread Dead Redemption and answer some listener questions. This is episode 480. Howdy, howdy. Let's get rowdy. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional hero clicks now. Are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like, 100 instant dead pain and human. Over oh, they, uh, six over people the think I am funny. I'm your Captain America. That was just you in a costume. You absolute fools. I think be able to edit that out. Sure. That's cool because it's expensive. I'm going to make hero clips like that forever. Are you kidding? <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Dial H for Hero Clicks is brought to you in part by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Hero Clicks singles and sealed products. Make sure you check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Also, head on over to Shop.WizKids.com. Our code is DialH10 to get you 10% off most Hero Clicks items. It won't apply to non-Hero Clicks items, pre-orders, iconics, or select figures like Scott Porter. But you can do any shopping you want at Shop.WizKids.com. Calm. Joining me, like always, in the studio is Simeon Bruce. What's going on, Simeon? Ooh, yeah. Feeling fresh and freaky for this episode. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah. Uh, what made you uh, made you happy this week, my man? Was it being fresh and freaky? It was. You know, I went to Subway, nice. and I said I'd like the fresh ah. and freaky combo. Um, I don't know if you've... So is that, is that when you go to Jimmy John's and you get some freaky fast and then subway you get the fresh part or how how is this how does this work it is so you go to jimmy john's you ask for the day old bread but for Mm. them to scoop out like the the middle of the bread so costs about like 50 cents and then you ask for a side well actually i mean it takes like five sides of jimmy john's kicking ranch and so you get (laughs) that big old tub of that and then you go to Subway, and you just get one of every cheese, one of every meat. You toast it on Jimmy John's bread. You put that Jimmy John's kick and ranch on it. When they ask you if you want vegetables, you just start screaming until they give it to you, and you can walk out of the store. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's the freaky okay. fresh, just awesome, awesome sandwich. It It's awful tasting. But uh, you know, right? It's, it's just is it? It's free. Yeah, it's freaky fresh. Freaky and really, free. it's and really, it's part of the experience to just scream at the top of your lungs yeah. incoherently until they just give you the sandwich and they let you leave. Yeah, I learned this from no. Zoomers that I live near. They taught me how oh, to gosh. do this. They said if you just scream at like any public servant or, um, you know. Con- customer service kind of representative person they'll oh, yeah. eventually just let you leave with whatever you want and so i tried it and honestly yeah, it turns out that's that's pretty true if you also just kind of ignore whatever they're saying and just continue to <laughs> walk either either over. in an area you're not supposed to be into or leaving the store with something you're not supposed to be leaving with you're also probably in the clear uh if you just ignore if you just ignore them like they're they, not there they they're legally not. can't stop you they legally can't stop yeah. you they, they legally cannot stop you from either uh yeah from leaving with their products and or entering a part of the store they're too they feel too safe behind the counter i've learned and so if you just completely ignore them once you're out of uh eye shot they just they just give up and it's really it's really crazy it's really interesting it's like a dinosaur almost in that way yeah uh, it's like, it's pretty, it's pretty once cool. you breach their doors like they're like ah my my policy says i'm not allowed to tackle you in the parking lot right. so i guess enjoy your big screen tv and uh subway sandwich Yep, exactly. Uh, listener, I don't know. don't do uh, don't do any of that. Listener, please don't <laughs> please don't be rude to customer service people. Please don't steal. I I feel like shouldn't have to say this because that was definitely clearly a joke. Uh, but for those that, that may have missed that it's a joke, uh, don't do those things. Um, definitely don't eat at Subway. Oof, that's a definitely don't eat at Jimmy John's. No, if you're going to combine two fast food places, there's better options than Jimmy John's yeah. and Subway. I don't know exactly what they are, but have you have you ever done any of the fast food combinations before? There, there's a whole website devoted to to some of these. Uh, we used to do the 
So not necessarily a fast food combination, but we used to, back in my day, do the like McChicken sandwich between two McDoubles. Oh, okay. I've had that. I actually have had that. That's really yeah, good. Yeah, so that was like a big one where that was like a, a cheat co- code for like a the world code, yeah, that like McDonald's people had unlocked. Code. Turned it like it's not bad. It no. tastes exactly how you would expect it to taste, which is like I mean, two cheeseburgers and then like a weird breaded chicken a sandwich. Ch- chicken in the, sandwich in, yeah. in the middle of a cheeseburger. Like, yeah, that's exactly what it tastes like. I after it being hyped up for years, I was expecting more, and that's in, what it ended up being like. But like that was my generation. This new generation has like a whole. Apparently, there's like I don't I don't know if they're vloggers or if it's podcasters or what. Okay. But there's an entire community of people that do this like challenge where you have to go through like the you have to go through like 15 different drive throughs and you just order whatever the car in front of you ordered and you have to eat whatever it is. And so wow. you're only allowed to do two dessert drive throughs which would be like a Krispy Kreme or like Cold Stone or like whatever. Ah, uh, I see. Okay. So like th- you're only allowed to do two of those. And then there's like a few that you have to do, which one mm. of them's KFC. So there's like a chance. Ooh, that could be a lot of food. Yeah. There's a chance that the person in front of you ordered like a bucket or more of chicken. Yeah. But there's like also a, a chance yeah. that they ordered like, like a small chicken strip basket and you get to split that between like the few people in the car. Sure. But like I, I was having this explained to me, and I was like, "This sounds insanely one dumb, like a waste of time and money." Yeah, just like drive, I have better things to do than drive around. Yeah, just driving to different as like, like some of the food is getting cold. Yeah, the longer you do this, oh no, like, like you have yeah. to eat it between. Like that's oh, that's part of the between? challenge. Oh, I thought the part of the challenge is you have to nice eat all video. the food. Like do a nice video at the end where it's like, oh our no no no, board. there's no nice video. You. <laughs> It's just this is like a constant stream of calories. Yeah, I like this. Um, but yeah, apparently, like it's it is somewhat fun. I haven't watched any of these, but I do. I appreciate the idea. It's just at the end of the day, I'm like, I don't know if I'm willing to do that. And then also like, like, especially like thinking about the closest places in Omaha to me. It'd be like going through Arby's, and I'm like, "Hey, I'm gonna take whatever the person in front of me got." And they're like, "Oh, they got like the the retirement home special, which is like sauerkraut, extra kraut, and ah, then two yes. pickles instead of buns, and then extra horseradish." And I'll be like, "Yep, that sounds like what someone would order in this drive-through." And then yeah. I'd get to like Burger King, and it'd be like, "Ah, yeah, the person in front of you was like drunk, and they ordered." 15 McDoubles, but we just gave oh. him two double cheeseburgers that's, instead. <laughs> or so, sure I don't know. Offer. Yeah. Yep. I don't like that. Sounds like a fun well, challenge. Maybe we'll, we might try that in Memphis. Maybe, yeah. Maybe, oh gosh. Not 15, Man. but maybe like, going to, maybe like five. Well, four. Honestly, I'd feel pretty, I'd feel pretty safe going to cookout, being like, whatever they had, I'll have, because yeah. it's all good. You I'll end up with like with four that. shakes and, Seven sandwiches for twenty hey, bucks. Four shakes is four shakes is already what I was going to order anyways. So that's that works out perfectly well. Uh, but for real though, what made you happy this week, my man? Oh, what made me happy this week? Since it's been posted on Facebook, I can say it out loud. Ah, uh, uh, yes. I helped my sister get engaged. Oh, my my future brother in law asked for not my hand in marriage, but he asked for my help in marriage, and. Uh. So he mostly just needed me to like be uh, like a living mannequin to like watch over their cute little picnic area because it was in like a public park and he had to go pick her up and like surprise her with it. So it was mostly that. But then I, I was also like the videographer. I tried to like sneak up on him and like while he was um, setting like the scene and stuff like that. So that was really fun. It was really cute. I'm happy for her. Uh, this is my second sister to get married, I'm waiting on a third, and then uh, after that, you know, that's that's it for the siblings. All three of the siblings that can get married will have gotten married. So, uh, no, it was very very sweet. 
<laughs> something I've been looking forward to for her for a while, just like because I know that's something that she wants. And so like, I was I was happy for her because she got that experience or whatever. Uh, but yeah, I was happy to be a part of it. I was happy to be included in the planning and whatnot. Um, but yeah, that was, I don't know. I can't really go into more detail than that. It was, it was just a yeah, no, fun I mean, little, haha. we got you like scaring somebody except the, the scary part is like, haha. now you're getting married. Like, you know, ha-ha, instead you're engaged. of like, instead of a skeleton been, uh, behind you or something, it's like, haha, a ring uh, on your finger. Ah, like, it's a little silly. Yeah. <laughs> For some reason, I just had thought he was going to ask you to do something billboard related. Like, <laughs> please, will you marry me X? And it's like, oh, I will marry you Y. But it's like, no. All right. I was really, I was really hoping for some big billboard flashy stuff. Like, I mean, that's I still, really, it's still cool. I really need your help. Can you put this on a billboard? I want it yeah. to say, will you? Yeah. That would, I mean, to be fair. We would definitely do that. Uh, yeah, but also see? to be fair, like, not nearly as romantic. That was probably, that was one of my things. I was probably like, probably not. What's no, the I least romantic not. way to ask for someone to like you know marry you or like you know propose to someone? I guess is the way you would say it. Um, the only thing I could come up with is unless you both are sports people and you've both been going to sports games or sport events for a long time, randomly taking your significant other to like a sporting event to have said sporting event like propose for you is probably like the worst way in my opinion mm. i've seen if too they don't many like yeah if they don't like whatever football baseball whatever it is and you're really passionate about it and you've always wanted to be one of those people that like up on the jumbotron look it's on us there's thirty thousand people watching you have to say yes what are you doing you have to say yes Ooh. you know it's like oh this is really awkward man if like, you say no fifty thousand people will boo you <laughs> yeah yeah like like I, I could see if you both love baseball or whatever, it's like, ah, it's really cool, it's really romantic. But if it's just like your thing and you like whatever propose to her there and she's like, I just go to the baseball game because you want to go to the baseball game, bro. Like I don't care about baseball. Like that's that's horrible. Well, and it's it's different pretty, when I did rough. it to like Rhea Ripley uh, at SmackDown because like she was uh, performing at the time, so like obviously she had yeah. some performance anxiety and didn't want to say yes, but like <sighs> I'm gonna keep trying. Um so yep. obviously she's Oof. like into me. So like, you know, she like looked me in the eyes when I did it. So like, you know, that was the first time we met. But like, obviously, <laughs> obviously. Geez. But I mean, you look someone in the eyes when you love them. So yeah, it's it true. makes sense. It makes sense. Basically, was, I mean, basically. Yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah. But uh, no, it's pretty awesome. Uh, what made me happy this last week? It was actually a bunch of things. It was a great week, and I should really say it was just an amazing uh, weekend. But one of the biggest things that I just got to do quick shout out the finale for this year's, I shouldn't say this year's Captain America run, but the, the Captain America run that was happening this year. And I really should grab it so I can shout out the writers and the artists and everything because they, man, they're an amazing team. Uh, they had the finale for it, and what a what a great way to end it. Oh my gosh, like. One of the best Captain America runs I've read literally since Secret Empire, since before Secret Empire. And they did everything. It wasn't it wasn't awful like the 2020, 2019, 2021 Captain America run, which a lot of the Captain America and the Avengers set is based off of. Like it wasn't garbage, like how that was literal garbage. Uh, this was actually incredible. This the writer actually cared about Steve Rogers, his relationship, uh, his friendships with uh Bucky Barnes with Sam Wilson with old invaders. Um, we saw him use aspects of Steve's life that so many people forget about, and it was incredible. And it was a love letter to any Captain America fan that I've been reading for the past like 10 years of Captain America comics. And I was like, wow, to see so many things pulled from so many different places uh, used in one event was just incredible. And I absolutely loved it. And I hope we get some of these figures in Hero Clicks soon because it'd be really awesome because we saw some really cool new variations of people as well as some new people that I really enjoyed. Uh, especially like with the way Bucky was. His his metal arm was like a super weird hyper technology metal arm instead of just like, oh yeah, it's an arm but metal. It was like 
Mr. Fantastic stretchy. It could make a knife. It oh, could make yeah. a bunch of little thready deals that I mean, go do technology, like R2-D2 stuff. He just R2-D2'd yeah. a computer, and I'm like, oh, okay. I guess to be fair, in Marvel, technology is advanced to, like, ridiculous levels. Right. Like, so blame, I would blame love... Tony Stark. Just like in DC, you can blame mm -hmm. anyone that has, like, some sort of, like, faster than light response time it's you blame uh, yeah. flash anyone that has like some sort of ridiculous technology you blame tony stark like he's been like doing symbiotic robotic whatever weird, like whatever weird things yeah so that comic was amazing and then real quick shout out to my family my mom came down this weekend and we hung out at Spielbound uh, on Sunday. It was a grand old time. This is where I learned that you can just walk past someone. Uh, Sir, you need a pass. Sir, you need a pass. Sir, you need a pass. And I just walked past him like, hey, mom, did you get me a pass? She's like, oh, no, you have to tell them. I was like, oh, okay, I walked back up. Well, your backs are like, yeah, yeah, I just wanted to see if I had a pass. Anyways, uh, they paid for me. And they're like, okay, cool. And I was like, yeah, <laughs> that, was, that was fun. Uh, but we played, and I was really excited for this. We played villainous star wars villainous so yeah. you know there's, there's there's disney villainous which i just love the mechanics of villainous i love disney's villainous but i don't care about disney that much like the main core set of disney villainous has one villain i even care about in it and then there are some expansions so like to find like the actual perfect set of villains i would even enjoy playing is very limited in disney villainous the Marvel villainous set has Marvel villains, which we all know and pseudo love. It's the, it doesn't have any of my favorite Marvel villains. It's got some weird random ones. But Marvel villainous really sucks. It takes forever, and all of the villains' objectives are way too complicated. Um, and there's also this other extra stuff they add that is also way complicated. So I'm like, dang, I really wanted Marvel villainous to be good, but it's super complicated. It takes way too long, and I kind of wasn't have a, having a fun time, which is tough. So... When I finally saw they were making Star Wars villainous, I was like, okay, yeah, General Grievous, Darth Vader, Moth Gideon, Asaz Ventress, whatever. These are all these are all baller. These are all great villains. Like Star Wars really has no bad villains. These are all pretty solid. I I definitely want to see if they're good, if if it's a fun game, or if it's like yeah. Marvel villainous and kind of sucks. Now, Grievous and it was awesome to collect more lightsabers, right? That's like his whole thing. Yeah, yeah. He just he just needs eight lightsabers. That's yeah. it. <laughs> but like, it's like i want a lightsaber for every hand <laughs> yep that's literally i want yeah that's all that's all grievous is i played grievous i was like okay he's probably the simplest one here and because i've got to teach the other two people the game i probably should have chose someone more complicated but i was like ah, whatever i want to play grievous he's the coolest anyways i i like general grievous he's a baller uh anyways so i did win spoiler alert it's pretty easy when all you have to do is collect eight lightsabers i will say he has some tough cards that mess you up really badly like lose a lightsaber lose a light he's got like a million lose a lightsaber like cards which is really really tough in his uh fate deck so but no the star wars version of villainous is great it just has an extra thing where instead of having just power it has both ambition and credits versus just power which is your money and you spend it ambition is used for whatever ambition-y things where it's like oh i finally achieve my goal type of stuff and then credits is used for like paying for allies and whatnot so i really enjoyed it i thought it was great and I got, i'm glad i was able to try it out at spielbound before i bought it and i'm definitely going to buy it maybe when it goes on sale or something at coolstuffinc.com i don't know we'll see we also attempted to play roots which looked like a really cool, cute game with funny little rabbits and cats and raccoons. And it is way, way too complicated. And I did not, we barely, we did the little thing where it just tells you how to take your first two turns. And I'm like, oh, this is, it's like telling somebody you're going to charge. Why? Oh, just because you're going to charge. That's you. You want to charge blades. And they don't actually understand how the game is played. So this is really not a great way to teach people <laughs> how to play the game. Um, sorry, Roots developers, but you're you're just here. We'll just tell you how to take your two turns. And then after that, you should know how to play it. And it's like, no. If someone told me, here, I'm going to tell you exactly how to take two turns in Hero Clicks. All right, now play the rest of the game. I, I would be completely lost, which is exactly what happened when my family attempted to play Root. And we quickly put it back in the box and said, well, it looked really cute, but it's got like a million tokens and... A bunch of garbage that we have no idea what's going on, so we're not going to play it. But it was a grand old time. Love playing board games with the family. So it was a great weekend. It was a great time. And there's a ton more stuff I could talk about, but I'm not going to. It was just a great, great grand old time. Yeah. I was gonna say, there's no time at Spielbound that's bad. 
Yeah. Oh it's, no. It's a library oh, for board games. It's awesome. It's so... You get to try out like you get to try out a bunch of stuff before you ever even consider buying it. Um, yeah. I should probably go there more often because I I end up buying or kickstarting like way too many board games just on like oh. It's a game about birds, and, like, you collect feathers to make them fly faster. That sounds great. And then I get it, and I'm like, uh, I don't know. I, I haven't actually got Feather Light yet, but I'm assuming that's what it's going to be like when I get oh, Feather gosh, Light. funny. Because I pre-ordered it. So I assume once I get it, it'll be about collecting feathers and going fast. Of course. Of course it is. I will say... The Spielbound also has the Marvel Zombicide Galactus on display. Ooh. Their price is a little much, I'm not going to lie. It's yeah. a little, little more snappy than what's on eBay. Um, they're asking kind of a lot. But to finally see it in person, oh, okay, I get it now. I understand that it, it's pretty It's pretty cool. It's pretty awesome. Wish it was yeah. painted, of course. But man, they're not, even unpainted. They're not really a retailer, so it makes sense that like their price is higher. Yeah. But... Yeah. I mean, to be fair, that, that Zombicide Galactus, if you kickstarted it at like cool. the level to get him, I think that was four hundred dollars. Like was the it? level, okay. The Kickstarter level to get him, I think, was four hundred dollars minimum. Um, and that's assuming that you backed him on time. So, like at this point, now that the, that it's uh, over. the Kickstarter's over, yeah, like but maybe the price isn't actually too bad. Yeah, maybe not. Oh, there's still a cheaper one on eBay with free shipping. Anyway, anyways, <laughs> it's still a good price to just like walk in. It's like a fine price. It's a fine price. It's sure. a fine price. Yeah, it's to fine. see it, to see it in person, I was like, well. Also, it did not need to have a super cool that big of a base too. Like that's just going above and beyond. That looks gnarly. Nice. Very. Imp- I was very impressed. Very it's impressed super dope. It. All right, let's go ahead and jump into some hero clicks news. Ladies and gentlemen, we have probably some of the coolest news we could share with you on the podcast this week. This is a this is a big announcement for all of you that are going to be going to Worlds in September. This is going to be happening the day before, so Wednesday night on the 13th. Ah, Simeon, this is just so cool. We, Dial Age for Hero Clicks, so Simeon, Ian, and I, will all be there Wednesday night, the 13th, for a little bit of a pre-Worlds kickoff event. This will be in the main hall. So if you are familiar with Worlds, it is where they do the fan appreciation events. So we don't quite get to go into the full convention center, but it's going to be in that hall, which is a pretty grand old time. There's lots of good seating. It's pretty fun. And we're going to be playing some Bad Sam. We're going to be playing some Hero Clicks Jeopardy and some more games. We're going to have just, if you show up, you get a Hero Clicks prize pretty yeah. fun as well as some really cool prizes for the winners of these events so and if you're go ahead oh uh, i don't want to interrupt you too much uh number one we're not expecting a ton of people because it is the day before any actual events go off but we have enough prizing that literally however many people show up will probably end up with at least one prize if not two yeah. I mean, guaranteed one prize per person that walks in the door, but possibly more than one prize per person that walks in the door. And I'm not going to say it's like a prize that's, you know, going to knock your socks off, be like worth coming in a day early, et cetera, et cetera. But I think if you enjoy listening to us, if you enjoy, you know, if you've heard Bad Sam or you were during one of our lives, you saw the like Heroclix Jeopardy. It's something to do on a night where you don't have anything else to do because it's it's the Wednesday night where like no events are going on. So it's either right. like go downtown in Memphis or hang out with us and get some free prizing kind of thing. And we potentially will have some extra prizing on top of the prizing that oh. we already know about. So we might yeah. guaranteed a a convention exclusive uh not convention exclusive uh, uh, it's it's in a box yeah it's it, no, it's not a it's a wko prize it from yesterday WKO prize figure yeah yeah so that's guaranteed and then on top of that we don't know if there will be additional pricing we don't know if there will be any kind of previews for us but we do know that like 
at minimum, if you walk in that door, you will be handed a exclusive prize from a WKO of yesteryear kind of thing. And uh, if you stick around and you hang out and you play some games with us, then you have the potential to win prizes. more. Yeah. And it'll be a blast. If you play Bad Sam, it's a very simple hero who's guessing game. I want to do the Bad Samaritan World Championship there. A handful of people from our Discord are going to be there. They know the most how to play the game. You've heard it here on the podcast podcast a handful of times. So I think three rounds to get three qual- three qualifying rounds. And then we have our three winners of those rounds. We'll then face off in a fourth and final round to be claimed the World Bad Samaritan Champion, which is really just a Hero Clicks guessing game. So really, you know, what yeah. do you, how much do you know about Hero Clicks? It'll be fun. And you can win all sorts of cool prizes. And you just have a blast with Simi and Ian and I. We'll just we'll just be hanging out, talking. Say, playing. Uh, depending on how many people show up, we might also just, you know, completely, like, divert into just, like, sitting there shooting the, like, you know. The breeze. Breeze about, like, hey, <laughs> it's, it's Worlds, it's Memphis. Like, what's going on? Like, what are you doing tomorrow? Like, what are you guys yeah. looking forward to? Like, you know, we might just, like, hang out, but... Um, if there's enough people, then we'll have to have more structure. It just kind of depends on like how many people show up. You're yeah. we're calling an audible on it. We've got plans for each direction, but um, there's definitely going right. to be prizing either way. And I think, yeah, if you are free and you're already going to be there Wednesday night, even even walking in late. So we're going to start, I think, 7 p.m.? Goal Memphis 7 time? p.m. Yep, 7 yeah. p.m. Memphis Standard Time. Even if you walk in at like 8 or 8.30, you'll still be prized out just for walking in. And uh, I think we'll go until like the convention closes at 10, so we have to be gone by then. Yes. But we'll probably go until like as long as we can, as long as people want us to. So like probably like 9.30 or so. And yeah, so like as long as you guys are walking in, you'll still be prized out. You'll still get a uh, thank you for coming in kind of participation prize. And then, uh, you know, you'll see us throughout the rest of the weekend. You'll have an idea of what we look like, that kind of thing. And you can just come up and say, hey, guys, blah, blah, blah. If you are there for uh, any kind of Dial H kind of discord. But if you're just there for WizKids, you'll also just get free stuff. So, yeah. That's also cool. And also, it's just since you mentioned WizKids, it's pretty awesome that they let us have this opportunity. This is, They're letting us use the Great Slam Event Center. This is, an, this is a world's official, WizKids official event that is going to be happening. This little pre-Worlds kickoff night event. So it's yeah. really cool that they let us do this. And it's pretty awesome to be like officially a part yeah. of and the de- events. Depending on you guys. Capacity than just one. Depending on how this turns out. This is probably going to be an event going forward. I I mean, I can't guarantee that, but like, if this right. is a good turnout, if it seems like something that they're willing to do, then like us handling, quote unquote, handling Wednesday night is probably going to be a thing going forward, which is just like a cool, like, hero clicks hangout. And it might not even be, you know, like a dial H, like, we, like, you know, sit sit here and listen to our timeshare kind of thing. It might end up just being like a hero clicks hangout where Wednesday night, like we host it, we MC it and you all get to like, just sit in like the convention center and kind of chill, uh, with no pressure or anything like that. Um, so like there, there's a couple ways it can go. It just kind of depends on the turnout and yeah, depends on if people want to see it going forward, but exactly. I'm excited. I wasn't oh, I think expecting it's be awesome. it to happen, but uh, now that it's happening, we're we're gonna make it work no matter what. And oh yeah, it's, you know, at the very least, what I can say is that you will all walk away with a figure that you can't just you know pick up at a local store. It is it is gonna be a figure that is fair that you would that have to buy fair. on eBay if you wanted? Yeah, I, yeah, I'd say that's true. That's very very true. So. Yep, get excited, guys. That is going to be September, September, I don't know, September's day, September 13th, that Wednesday night before Thursday, the 14th, the official kickoff of World. So, September 13th, if you're getting in early, might as well come hang out with us at the convention center, have some fun, get some free prizes, play uh, play some fun Hero Clicks games. So, yep, you can check that out. 
please come. Seriously, it'll be a blast because we want to keep doing this. And it's thanks to your support that we've been able to do it. So keep on supporting us if you're coming. We may we may try to live stream it. I don't know for those at home that may want to see the event, especially the crowning of a world bad Samaritan champion <laughs> slash Hero Clicks Jeopardy champion. It might, it could be yeah, fun. we might just but record we'll, it. We'll and, uh, definitely record it. We'll definitely post record it later because yeah, uh, and post it. for those that don't want to have the fear of missing out. Yeah, obviously Bill doesn't want his crowning moment um, tarnished once he, he reclaims his title of and becomes a world bad saying i would be so impressed i'd be so impressed that'd be pretty amazing so yeah tell everybody that you know that might want to go get this and also if you just want some more free hero clicks bring a buddy with you and be like all right well give me your thing you know if they don't want it so it works out everybody it's a win-win situation it's going to be a blast if you're planning on driving down and you're going to end up landing in memphis like late wednesday night or early thursday maybe just take day before off as well you know ask your boss yeah. real quick it's a li- it's not quite too late at this point you got two weeks or more uh but yeah like it's definitely possible if you're driving down and then if you're flying i mean obviously you probably already have your plane ticket but if you're landing wednesday and you're going to get to the graceland hotel wednesday night you can shuttle there from the airport and then you can basically walk from the hotel to the convention center in like five minutes. Even if you're running late, even if you're not going to get there at like seven or eight, if you're just going to barely get to the hotel at like eight or eight thirty, you probably still have time to like hop over real quick. So I would say if you're planning on getting there anytime Wednesday at all, at least consider adding it to your addendum. Like you're already, you're already jet lagged. You're already just basically, you know, out of sorts. So you might as well come over and hear us talk nonsense for a while. I don't know why you wouldn't. I would say so. Absolutely. So that's that's really about it for news this week, guys. It's been a really light news week. We could go into WizKids HeroClix having the goon off, which is pretty cool. Goon off. Uh, it sounds pretty hilarious. So... They're having people vote for the best goon in Notorious. Now, this is merely just a, a voting. Let me tell you something. Dial H has quite the goon off planned as well in the future. We're not going to get into that. So, Simeon, I'm, let me tell you the matchups. I don't know if you know the current standings. How I, closely you've I did following. see their most recent post. Did. Okay. And so you kind I of, will you do have know. to say, I voted for literally zero of the... the so that's that almost that's almost how I was. I was shocked and appalled at basically every single goon that beat out. So like the very first goon matchup was Gorilla City Warrior versus the OG goon, and somehow yeah. somehow OG the OG goon. goon lost. Yeah, like what? I get. I don't it. know who was hating on OG goon. I that's get messed it. Up. I also want to go back and be monkey, but man. He has goon on his shirt. I know. You can't get more henchmen than someone that reps goon He's on their the shirt. Goon. He is the goon. Yeah. I, I, I really, after that appalling one, I was like, wow, I, I'm okay, fine. We move on. We see the polar bear versus the Cordian Thunderer. Now, to be fair, this is, this is a stacked. This yeah. is a, this is a stacked matchup. These are two goaded goons, you could say. Um, but, the Cordian Thunderer has to take it, I thought, you would in think my mind. But he's got a big old lightning bolt in one hand. Also, like the Cordians in comics, a very cool like race that like is it's underutilized in DC, but a very cool race of warriors. Um similar to like Kryptonians, but not quite like as powerful and blah blah blah. Um but compared to like a polar bear, I thought that was a no brainer. I yeah. really was like, oh, obviously it's going to be, you know, the dudes that do stuff. The dudes that made like the Sinestro ring and, blo- you know, like the incredibly talented, insane, weaponized people of, no, nope, no, nope, polar bear won. Drinking a Coke and wearing a scarf beat out <laughs> Cordian Thunderer somehow. And I get it. The polar bear is cool. I like the polar bear. Don't get us wrong. We both like the polar bear, but like compared to the. Cordian Thunderer? Are you kidding me? But okay. Yeah. Sure. Move on. Move on to the next one. The White Rabbit Goon versus the Joker Goon. This is probably now the this closest is, one. 
The yeah, one where I'm like, is... I'm the coolest with being like, all right, like, you know, whichever. I was super down for White Rabbit Goon just because the sculpt alone. He looks alone, so cool. He looks so cool. The sculpt alone on this one, head. like, White Rabbit Goon, he's got a, a rabbit head, and then he's doing like a namaste kind of like yeah, hands pray together hands. pray kind of like half yeah. bow kind of thing. That's super cool. And then Joker Goon is just holding a fish. That, Which I, mean, I get it. It's the big Joker fish. It's got the red yeah. lipstick. It's it's smiling with its fishy teeth. He's holding a fish. But like, is it probably the best Joker goon we've ever gotten? You know what? I don't even remember what he does. But probably, because he looks really cool, versus just the black clown mask or white clown mask, black suit type Joker goons in the past. But uh, I don't know. He's not wowing me. He doesn't wow me like the cool rabbit head. But uh, he wowed more people than I thought, and Joker Goon won. Yeah. Joker Goon I really moved thought, on to the next round. I really thought that like rabbit head would just win most people over, and I, I know that's what I thought too. So I'm, the one time over we were <laughs> over we were three on the at this point <laughs> on the animal side, and it uh, it didn't work out, which is crazy. It was the more aquatic side. Now speaking of the more aquatic side, the next matchup we have is the Black Manta Goon versus the Riddler Goon. Now I will say. This is the one matchup where I was like, I was I was on Black Mana Goon side. I don't. Were you on Riddler Goon side, Simeon? I was. I must say, why? Yeah, uh, specifically just because like the sculpt, Black Mana you're, Goon. You're big I on the Namaste. I can't tell what Black Mana Goon is actually doing. He's well, you just, see, he's uh, got like a he's weird in box, his black scuba suit, and he's holding up a yellow thing. A square is he? Uh, is yellow, it a yellow square <laughs> flashlights is it a ray gun a water related ray gun thing i don't know he's got a little red little, little red visor yeah that's that was but, my uh, main reason for not voting for the man not voting for him i see yeah but and, uh yeah this like, was this was like one of the the more even ones where it, it was it truly could have gone either me. way for me um and this is one of the only ones where I didn't really care about the outcome as well. Whereas, like, the previous ones, I was like, how how dare the community do this to me? But, you know. Also, like, not for nothing, uh, Brad Broyles did say on the, the first voting, um, which would have been, gosh, what was the first vote? It would have been... Um, that was the Gorilla Soldier versus Goon. Gorilla, yeah, Gorilla Soldier versus Goon. Brad did say it's unfair to allow like reacts as one of like the votes. That is true. So that because, is true. The Gorilla Soldier yeah. had a like react, which is the base, the base react. And yeah, so. if you don't know, then like yeah, like the base react. If you see a post and you just like tap twice or whatever. I don't know. I don't know how social media works, but it's way easier to just like a post than it is to actually like sit there and hold down, scroll over, pick like the react that you want, etc. So after Brad Boyles pointed that out, they changed it. They switched over to the like right. the surprise react and I think the heart react. I believe the heart, yes. Yeah. So like for the rest of them, that's what like the other two were, which is awesome because that actually means that like you can't just tap a screen and all of a sudden you know it happens you have to actually hold down and then select which reaction you want so i think yeah after after the first vote it was a lot more accurate although i don't know if that would have changed the first vote honestly I, yeah I it seemed like gorilla city was gonna would've was gonna win either way yeah via the tough. comments there was a lot of comments boosting gorillas and while i don't disagree if this was wonder woman 80th i would have definitely been on the side of the gorillas i think those were some of the best bystanders that oh, they yes. had back then um for this set i think those are also very cool bystanders so hard to say this time around i was anti-gorilla previously i was pro harambe Oh wow, it's pretty Listen, brave of me to say that, but you know it is. It really is. Wow, I'm, that's I'm a brave person. You know, wow, you really are. Oh my gosh, <laughs> stunning, stunning, yeah. Simeon. Was that 2016? Yeah. Uh, yep, yep. Right back seven years yeah, ago. Thank only, you. Thank you for that. Only seven that. years ago. 
Yeah. Only cool seven Super years brave. ago. <laughs> but the Black Manta Goon did beat the Riddler Goon. And so now the current round that's being voted on is the Gorilla City versus the Joker Goon. I, after looking at their Instagram and their Facebook, it's looking like Gorilla City is going to crank out another oh, W man. here. I don't think Joker Goon stands a chance against I Gorilla would, City. Yeah, Gorilla City is just super. He's just dominating right now. Not only is it like a very memeable goon, it's also just like sculpt wise. Yeah, monkey. Yeah, it's very. It's a very big sculpt. It's very cool. I'd sculpt. rather have monkey every day of the week than the, than the fish one. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, there's a simian. Simeon joke in there somewhere about monkey and Simeon, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna make it. We I've made it. I've made it a million Caesar. times. But that means next Let up is gonna be Polar Bear. Caesar. Polar Bear versus the Black Manta is next. And I honestly yeah. don't like Black Manta's chances against I the Polar don't Bear. either. Yeah. Yeah. Like, so previous people have commented it's gonna end up being uh basically gorilla versus polar bear, and I don't disagree. I think people want to see the bear win versus the bear versus monkey. You know, yeah, it's it's going to be polar bear versus uh, black manta goon, and in that specific situation, I want to see the polar bear win. When it becomes polar bear versus monkey, I'm on the I'm on the side of the monkey. You know, you're on monkey side. I'm, I'm on, actually on polar side. bear side. I'm on polar bear side. Um, when it comes down to monkey versus polar bear, so I was also calculating in like the effectiveness of each bystander when I was doing my each votes. Goon, were you? I was like, do I like the sculpt more than like the effectability? And so Oops. I was calculating that in, but towards the end here, that's out the window. Oh, it's totally gone. I mean, if it if it's monkey versus polar bear and it's on polar bear turf, that's polar bear all day. If it's polar bear on monkey turf, I don't know. I've never seen that. I've never seen polar bear on monkey turf, so it's probably what's the probably um, monkey? Uh, what's it? What's it called? If it's if it's brown, lay down. If it's <laughs> if it's black, attack. And if it's if it's white, good night. You lose. Right? Yeah, yeah, see. something like that. <laughs> so I think, I think a lot of sayings up. for bears that a lot of bear sayings. Humans die. <laughs> very true. Very true. But these aren't humans. These are monkeys. Yeah. Oh. So monkeys don't Very have true. these same sayings, you know. It's, it Ooh. could just be the Ooh. world's largest white raccoon. I think I think basically. But that's that's the goon off, ladies and gentlemen. If you are upset by who won and you didn't vote, well then you better go vote to see what goon wins. Go to WizKids Hero Clicks Facebook page or their Instagram and vote for the goon off. Also, every time they hit another thousand followers, they're going to show off some new cool sculpts. And we haven't, we've, the last two ones were from the Hellfire Gala, which we've seen so little from. It's literally yeah. like just those. We also so only know please. two dials from the chases of Notorious. Also, that. They're yeah. <laughs> the, both the Superman dials. That's all we know from the chases right now. People that are saying, like, our. Uh, Black Lantern's going to be good. We have no clue. Uh, our deceased character is going to be good. We have no clue. The only thing we can base it off of is the two Supermans that we've seen. Superman Black Lantern and Superman Deceased. And those are both like Very true. fairly mediocre I mean, options. Yeah, they're, they're most powerful as Superman is usually. So, yeah. It's, yeah. I mean, but yeah, there is no was there? Is there yeah. a Black Knight Superman? Well, yeah, the Devastator was technically Black Knight Superman. That's uh oh, let's when Batman infected himself. That's with Doomsday. Doomsday virus, isn't yeah. that the Doomsday? I wouldn't call that Superman. That's Doomsday. It's not. It's not Superman, but that was like the yeah, Superman, the version. powerful, strong Superman. Yeah, that's one, how yeah. he quote unquote defeated Superman in that universe. I see. I see. I oh, say, I, gotcha. I won't I say how the laughing. Like the Batman who laughs defeated Superman because ah, it's the the, the Edge Lord. Yes. Yeah, the, the Edge Lord Edgehold, Batman. Edgelord who laughs Superman was written by like fourteen year old. I don't know. I don't know anything about. I have, I have zero clue. Uh, it was Grant Wayne Brady. Oh, <laughs> Grant wish, Morrison. Yeah. Uh, I think it was Grant Morrison. Um, okay. He, all I can remember is that like the guy that did it 
absolutely hates the, like anyone with a cape. Mm. Wow. We should make this guy write more comic books than superheroes in them. Garth Ennis. Garth yeah. Ennis. He's done some great Not, work. Like Garth, Garth Ennis, like Brooks. truly Garth Ennis done some amazing like Moon Knight awesome run with Garth Ennis. It's just right when on. it comes to like the classics garth is like yeah I, what if superman was like a, a pee pee poo poo guy that you know ruined everything and oh garth he already is yeah and you're like yeah you're right you're right <laughs> that's basically but, uh, he's like what if the punisher yeah. like was turned into thomas the tank engine and he he was just a train with m80s attached to his <laughs> wheels what if frank castle was just a train well, that's the chase I want in Wheels of Vengeance is Frank, the little engine that could ca- castle. Let's, be, let's bring back uh, the, the train tracks map. And have, oh, yeah, please. Frank, the Wheels of Vengeance choo-choo train. Good gosh. That would be insane. I, I love it. Let's, no, let's Ram get, except let's get as hit. range. Ram at range. How would that? I don't know. Uh, no, nah, yeah. it doesn't matter how it, it doesn't matter how it works. I love no, it. I it love just it. works. It just works. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Since that's basically it for news, we're gonna jump to a favorite segment of mine that we haven't done in a long time, and that is Thread Dead Redemption. There are dozens of us. Dozens. I was on HC Realms the other day, and Simeon heard all this before, and I was I was getting visibly upset i was getting quite angry at eastern i may even mention this on the podcast but amongst all the threads that were making me want to destroy my computer and throw it out the window was one thread of gold that i was like oh this is actually really cool it's really creative and i really enjoy it and i really enjoy what people are doing with it so this thread is by oathful it was started on august 1st and it is a legacy card design contest now they have done design a figure contest where it's just whoever and people get pretty crazy with it designing like figures that'll probably never exist in the game but that's kind of the fun thing is that oh, i can design a video game character it's and it's pretty cool but seeing how people design a legacy card is really neat to see like oh well what alternate abilities would you do some people that are i i'm gonna assume newer all they did was just make them a little cheaper and do almost the exact same thing and or worse and that's okay if you're just learning how to do it that's totally fine you're getting the vibe for it, and that's cool. Other people are like, whoa, I'm going to take this guy, and he's going to do something totally different, which is really cool. Or it's like, I'm going to update their ability for the modern age. So it's really fun to see how different people would take on the legacy card. It's really neat. So I'll just go ahead and read Oathful's first post here. Hello, everyone, and welcome to August Legacy Card Design Contest. We're looking forward to seeing creativity that's sure to be displayed this month. For those of you who are unaware of how the contest works, here we go. There will be three rounds, with each round lasting one week, running from Tuesday to Tuesday. Each round will be posted with specific dates for how long they'll last as clarification. Voting for each round will start the next when the next round begins. For examples, voting for round one will start when round two begins. You may vote for three dials each week, as well as one honorable mention to help avoid ties. In addition to normal votes during round three, you guys will vote on who you think had the most thematic synergy between all of their legacy cards during the month. Your cards must be made with the most up-to-date rules for Modern Age games. You can find the rules, power sheet, and erratas on the WizKids' website. No Modern Age figures may be selected unless the prompt for that week allows for it. As for the titles you guys get to compete for, ooh ah, titles, ooh. There's the weekly winner, so the best winner each week. There's the best designer, the person that got the most votes at the end of the month. And then there's best theme, the person who has the most theme votes at the end of the month, which is, again, the three dials they made, how well they worked, or not three dials, but three legacy cards they make, and how well they work together. So, Man, and I could I could attach this to my signature at the bottom of my HC Realms y- oh, yeah. user posts. So every yep. time I post, you could see that I was the best designer or best theme. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Exactly, Simeon. You can wow. have in your signature, like, HC Realm's first legacy card making oh. champion winner of August I 2023. I wish I had seen this 27 days ago. I know, right? So I could have well, participated. There's, there's always September. Simeon, what are you doing on the drive? Like, all my... It's not in a legacy card. Gosh, all my signature on HC Realm says is my, uh, you know, KO record in uh, Battle Royals at Worlds. Oh, you know, that is pretty cool. I mean, not nearly counting 
which I not mean, nearly as cool as being the first HC Realms no, not legacy even card remotely making as cool. championship winner. Gosh. Oh, jeez. I feel like a loser. I'm going to delete this now. <laughs> no one cares about how many characters I've oh, gosh. KO'd in Battle Royals when I could have been the best designer or best theme. So the August 1st prompt, which this is perfect. I'm actually really bummed that I missed this because there's a very specific kind of character you can make with this prompt. Uh, there's two prompts. A character that uses leadership in an interesting way or a character that is an inspiration to other heroes. So obviously there are actually... This is not even me being myself. There actually are just quite a few Captain Americas in this uh, first prompt. Shout out to Jedi Knight for... I, I will just going down the list. The Iron Man from ADW would be an interesting Iron Man. How do you feel about that? Not even his dial necessarily, but getting that as a legacy figure here from Slade. Oh, I'd I be absolutely okay with it. I like would that love Iron that Man. being a legacy figure. That, yeah. that Captain... Or, geez, Captain America. Uh, <laughs> First of all, the inspirational icons thing. A character that uses leadership or is an inspiration is just like kind of forcefully entering into my brain that it's Captain America. But then know, Slade right? Wilson instantly uh, posting that ADW Iron Man. That is my favorite Iron Man. That oh, is, is it like, really your favorite Iron Man? Oh, wow. I think that's one of the best ones they've ever done. So the, the original has the free action choose any two standard powers except defense powers until your next turn he can use the chosen powers and can't use possessed standard speed attack or damage powers so he gives up oh, wow. some stuff for those crazy. two powers but this is like extremist armor kind of iron man and then he has okay. uh use my armor to imprison you which is his last two clicks Give him a power action. Choose an opposing character within three squares and line of fire until your next turn. That character can't move or make range attacks, and Iron Man can't use invulnerability. So it makes him heavily susceptible to being KO'd on his last two clicks. But it also just, if you end up being, like, the last two figures, it does give him, like, a option to, like, box them in. They can't use any powers. You can't use invulnerability. But he can still use sidestep. He can use, still use pulse wave. I really liked this Iron Man. I think it was like, at, at the time it was probably the best one that we had ever seen. Um, but that being said, it was still at the time one of the worst pick of powers that were available. It was really tough. And I, if I am correct, he had to be errated because I believe when he first came out, he just had the boot symbol. He couldn't fly, right? I want to yeah, say. I do. Yeah, I do believe that. Yeah. So, so Jakeem was better, and then oh yeah, like a set after or a set before what was eighty A set it was a set after. What if what if was what after if ADW. yeah? What if yeah. was a set after? So Goblin King, who could choose like three powers, was like so much better. Or I don't, I, it might have been two, but whatever. He also had to get errated because yeah, he was just like a cheaper version of this Iron Man with a longer dial and. <laughs> Man, I wanted this Iron Man to be so better, so much better. I I think the extremist armor and uh, the spear armor Iron Man like deserve like a really good like meta version where they're just like actually competitive, and this version was not it. So right, I do like that this was like one of the first options when somebody posted. Yeah, Slade, it's pretty cool. Slade Wilson here posted this guy right away this this brings slade wilson up he was in a little bit of a, a hole for me after some recent postings but this this is i'm not saying he's out of it uh, i'm saying it, it it adds some points it adds some points next up destructive boy chose one of my favorite versions of batman the dick bats batman from elseworlds i'm not going to get into it but i do think it's cool and yeah of course batman's a very inspiring character he inspired all sorts of funny little orphans to do funny little things <laughs> uh, shout out Jedi Knight chose Steve Rogers from the original Captain America set. I would like this oh, yeah. figure. I would really like this guy to get a legacy card. Yeah, full he did a pretty full on shield like suit. Just just shield Steve. Yeah, no, he has no shield on a sculpt. Just Steve with a, a little gun. It's kind of wild. Like this is just Commander Steve Rogers, all about being like Secret Avengers, leading the Secret Avengers, and just being like a member of Shield. It's really cool. So. 
I really like this figure when he came out. He was a ton of fun. The legacy card is pretty solid. I think Jedi Knight's pretty new, so it's very simplistic to what he did before, and he just kind of updates it a little bit, so that's kind of fun. Shout out to Two Gun Kid here, though, for choosing Uncle Sam. Simi and I both agree, man, we want Uncle Sam so bad to get a legacy card. Holy smokes. So, big yeah. shout out to Two Gun I, Kid. So, when, when Calder gave me this thread, I was like, which one of us gets to talk about this? I but, know. <laughs> but yeah, Uncle Sam absolutely deserves a legacy card. He's one, he's the only Uncle Sam we've ever gotten in Hero Clips. Yeah. Two, he's like just one of the most iconic sculpts, one of the most iconic dials I can think of. He has such a cool dial. Like, he starts off with like a leadership and a special attack power that like gives him like bonuses and stuff and then if you damage him off of that all of a sudden he gets the giant symbol and he's just like this giant quaking flurry monster dude um obviously this is from what this is from crisis i think yeah yes Uncle Sam's crisis. From the crisis it's a little side. world so yes it's crisis so it's like it's way too old to like actually be modern viable but this Uncle Sam is like still like with a few like kind of upgrades. I think this Uncle Sam could still like pack a punch. He could still like you know hold his own. Um, back in the day, he had the transporter boot symbol for whatever that was worth. So he had like Very hyper true. weird he hypersonic like negative two attack power hypersonic and whatever that came with kind of stuff. So I know. I played him specifically, and I also cosplayed him specifically. And that's uh, very true. Our Thursday Throwdown series when we were all the way back in, uh, yeah, the Crisis, and Crisis yeah, versus yeah. whatever. Uh, Ooh, <laughs> I don't. I want to say it was mutations and monsters. That sounds about right. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, man. I think the fact that he was not as crazy to collect as some of the other uniques that we've seen from that era, it'd be really cool to see a Uncle Sam get legacied. And it's one of those like iconic Americana kind of figures where you could do pretty much anything. You could give him two new traits, a new attack power, a new damage power. You could do all kinds of different stuff with him and it, you know, changes point value. It would still be like a truly like iconic character for me i really i really like what two gun kid also did with the dial he kept the as big as my country flavor text and he also kept the give me your tired give me your poor for the attack the as big as your country used to just be the (laughs) two through four where uncle sam just gets the giant damage symbol and now it's close combat expert once per turn, you choose a size, and he is that size. It gains its effects that you choose again. So standard, he gets to be standard size, and he also gets combat reflexes, willpower. If he's a giant, he gets to be giant sidestep prob, and if he's colossal, he's charge and plus one bolt, which is wild, um, which is just a huge help for Uncle Sam not having any movement attack on his dial, and also he can be supporty, or he can be a little more defensive. It's really cool. I really like that special ability a lot. His second trait is Uncle Sam wants you. When Uncle Sam uses willpower from the characters in four squares and line of fire can use willpower. That's pretty dang cool. So when he is a giant, or sorry, when he's just standard, he gives everybody else so he buffs them. And then this guy, Two Gun Kid did a very good job. He slight critique. He has sideline activity <laughs> as the flavor text. Uh, not flavor just text, but uh, sideline instead active, of side. Yeah. yeah, it's supposed to be sideline active. Very simple. One, you know, just just mess around with the word and you're good. When a friendly character with the soldier keyword and at least forty points or the freedom fighter keyword is KO'd, you place Uncle Sam in his square on click six, which is a a flurry click, which is pretty nice. A little nine attack flurry, and he gains immune until your next turn. Uh, and if you KO him, he's worth 25 points. So pretty cool that he's got silent yeah. active when a freedom, a freedom fighter or a soldier character of 40 points or more is KO'd. So that's pretty cool. I like that ability a lot. And then he upped to the damage power. So the damage power, I think, is just it's very weird. It's on a weird point in his dial where he'll probably land on it because he's got invulnerability. Right. And then he goes on to it for, yeah, clicks two through four. And this is really cool because it uses another ability, his give me your tired 
and your poor, but instead it's on his damage power. So I regret that I have only one. Oh, it's kind of a combination of both, actually, because it's also within four squares. It's not necessarily the same, but friendly characters in four squares can use Mastermind, but only to choose to Mastermind onto Uncle Sam. Damage Mastermind onto Uncle Sam is reduced by an additional one, so he's reducing it by three since he already has Invuln. That's pretty solid. I actually really like that, where he can kind of take hits for the rest of your team. Usually when with like when they design someone with this effect, it's like someone you don't really want to mastermind onto. But I wouldn't mind if Uncle Sam just took one hit and he's on Leap Climb. And I'm like, I, I'll mastermind him on a flurry, maybe. He's got a pretty decent amount of flurry on his dial. And then his attack power on his first click and then his last four is his Give Me Your Tired or Pour, which keeps that same ability, but it adds some more. So it gives him Steel Energy now. And when he makes a close attack, you modify his attack by plus one for each friendly character four or fewer squares away from Uncle Sam that he can draw a line of fire to. Um, and that is marked with one or more action tokens. It's a little, it's a little wordy, but that's okay. And then it's it says also he may heal above his starting line using this power, which I don't understand because he I think, didn't actually. I think give that him attack a power starting is line. specifically like to be a, a kind of like counter to his like original I, attack power. I st- right. I that's what I'm guessing. So I think he thinks that his starting line when he begins the game and you start him on click six is like a starting line. But if you just put him on click six, you don't need that heal oh, past his starting line. Yeah. That's what I'm assuming he's getting at. The, like the sideline so active very tiny yeah. Uh, so it's a very tiny critique. On click six. But yeah. He can definitely heal past click six because it's not a starting line. Just because he began the game there, um, he can still heal past it. So yeah. So you don't necessarily need that, which is fine. But that's what Uncle Sam does, and I love it. I like it. He's 40 points cheaper. I think it's a little wordy for just a figure in general. I think it, it does. it's doing a lot, but I like the role he fills, and I like the creativity that Two Gun yeah. Kid used on Uncle Sam. And Uncle Sam got, got my vote easily for round one. Oh, absolutely. Um, and I think that can, was, yeah. Uh, even I, though I Two Gun Kid so is the one that made the post about Uncle Sam. Um, and not made a post about Two Gun Kid. Yeah, I uh, know it's really kind of funny. <laughs> I I think Uncle Sam is a figure that like me and Calder both have like called out. It's like a figure that needs to get a legacy card because one, I think in the aspect of like actual rarity, he's only like a rare. He is unique. I believe but so. He's, I think he's he's zero thirty five. I think he's only a rare, or I don't know what they were doing at the time in that set but yeah i really don't think he's hard to come by i know i picked the one i got up for over like four bucks or something like that and it's just such a fun figure to have like top dial the the og not even getting into two gun kids like special like version the og top dial is a 10 for four with a uh he has the like quote unquote hypersonic but like minus ten tech. Uh, yes. Minus two to your ten tech. So he's actually like an eight for four when you use his movement ability or whatever. Uh but his attack power on his top dial is when he makes a close attack, modify his attack by plus one for each friendly character four or fewer squares away to which Uncle Sam can draw a clear line of fire and that is marked with one or more action tokens. So I know when I was using this character, he was always at like a plus three. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's so easy. It's so easy to do that. And even with his like moving attack, his, you know, quote unquote, like broken hypersonic, whatever right. that like carry ability hypersonic version is, he's in minus two and then plus three almost always. So he's like a 13 for four, which is really cool for this era. It is. And then, it's, yeah. And actually, you know, it's kind of crazy about that. That like retroactively really works for a lot of abilities we give like legacy card of figures, anyways, that WizKids yeah. has been making, right? They always do like a way to like cheat their stats, like, oh, they have terrible defense. Well, they can give it to an opposing character, or they get all these bonuses, or they have a terrible attack, they get all these bonuses. He has like built in like nine, eight, sevens, like bad attack values. And then he has this like built in to give him a bonus to make his attack better. It's kind of crazy. Yeah. Just like on his original dial. On his not original, even, yeah, like, on his original not dial. Like, not even the legacy Gun Kids could version. Be. Yeah. Also, like, that's hilarious. His original dial has the Herald and Soldier theme or uh, keywords. keywords. I know, right? It's yeah. So, good. so like Herald, super good currently. Uh, oh, after rotation, so it'll be 
taking a bit of a hit. Soldier, also super good. Like, modern and silver. Yeah. So, this Uncle Sam, if he ever does get legacy carded and he keeps those keywords, uh, I mean, he's not going to be able to, like, sneak a lantern ring on for free unless right. he gets something other than Harold. But he'll be able to sneak onto lantern teams for free because Harold, so cool. yeah, like, all lanterns have that keyword. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, it's it's pretty awesome. Next up, uh, we're not going to spend all that, all, like the same amount of time that we spent Uncle Sam on every other figure, because I think Simi and I both just agree that he's he was both our pick for round one. But to finish off round one, shout out Dragonfly for choosing Judge Hershey. She's funny. I In yeah. the original Judge Dredd movie, she has a great line. You don't use that line. That's okay. I understand. It's not very PG-13. But uh, I like shout out Judge Hershey. That's cool comic junkie shout out him using master chief cortana that's pretty cool also shout out him keeping grenades existing and then doing all this extra work to make more grenades that's good for you uh limelight makes a cyclops from wolverine and the x-men the zero 16 cyclops pretty cool pretty solid yeah. cyclops actually, actually when he came out as far as like cyclops go that's actually one of my more favorite ones the uh oh nice so not only does he like fit on a team base because like he's one of the ones that splits oh, right. off for That's the team he's base, built for yeah. But also, um, going from that ninety four kind of like awful point value to an eighty five special trait, and then you know I always hated uh, Cyclops and uh, Havoc in that Wolverine and the X Men set had the oh, Summers yeah? brother trait. It was such a wasted trait where it was just like. They ignore all damage dealt by characters named Havoc, and then Havoc ignores <laughs> that is true, damage yeah. dealt by Cyclops. And it's like, yes, I understand it's why. Attack. It makes yeah. sense. It makes sense. Like, Havoc doesn't, like, you know, in the comics, in the, like, TV series, the cartoons, whatever, they don't damage each other. Like, they're, they don't like, Cyclops' optic right beams and Havoc's little blasts, they don't damage each other for whatever random reason. But apparently, it's this way with Black Tom and yeah, Black Tom Cassidy, and uh, uh, old Banshee, Banshee as well. For yeah, some reason. yeah, like for some reason, like yeah, siblings don't damage each other. Yeah, their um, mutant powers have no effect. Yeah, tell that Ooh, to ah. Scarlet Witch and uh, Quicksilver. Uh, but I'm glad that like in uh, old Limelight, he got rid of that special. I actually trait. really like his flavor text for his new trait. Because if that's actually a Cyclops line, that actually goes kind of hard. Uh, it absolutely is. Yeah, plan, plan B implies B. we only have 26. That That's a pretty hard. That's, that's, a, that's, that's a Cyclops a, that line. really yeah. hard. That's pretty good. I like that a lot. I can't remember who it is, but someone's like looks at Cyclops and they're like, I guess it's time for plan B. And he looks back and he says, plan B implies we only have 26 plans. Like um, Cyclops is like. He does not have a lot of redeemable moments, but that's a pretty icy line to come from Scott. I'm not oh, like, that, that's yeah. pretty cool. The pro, like the thing with Cyclops is like he absolutely has to plan for like absolute fl- failure, like ten out of ten times. You know, like as as any kind of mutant or X Men have to, he has to plan for failure the majority of the time, and so yeah. The, like the fact that they use that like plan B implies we only have twenty six. Um, I can't remember what series that was out of. It wasn't Avengers versus X Men, but it was, it was something close to Avengers versus X Men as far as like timeline goes. Like around that time, yeah, sure. around that timeline where he says he says it like Emma Frost or something. Um, but yeah, it's just like Cyclops basically essentially like essentially saying. You know, like there's there's more than twenty six plans that yeah. are ready to fail with to continue on this plan. Like I've I've thought of everything. Trust me. Like I've thought of I've thought of everything except for failing twenty five times because yeah, I'm yeah. basically planning on us failing twenty five times. <laughs> Jeez. It's not so quite as cool is as uh, Doctor a Strange's. Oh, million, million plans, whatever. Yeah, only one universe do we get it right kind of thing. Yeah. Next up, Brennan 4. I'm not going to totally highlight his Patriot dial, but it kind of 
is really, really cool. So he makes a Patriot legacy card for the Civil War Patriot. I just like to shout out the one really cool ability I like that he has here, and that is at the beginning of the game, when you choose a team ability for the Avengers team ability, you may choose a keyword instead. That's insane. I love it. But like, it's still like 50 points for Patriot. It's only 10 points off, and like Patriot is super easy to KO. But man, I super, I just like that creativity that's really cool i hope they actually give that to somebody like whether it be the new justice league or avengers that you can choose a keyword instead of just a team ability like that's i can be pretty strong in theme and it's already strong in theme but man now you just be like well you have an avengers team but they're not all avengers well i'm just gonna choose a keyword like oh it's so good so i like that a lot stormcrawler they chose splinter pretty cool it may be a reference they may have tried to base it off the new splinter i haven't seen ninja turtles yet so i don't know if they were trying to maybe they were maybe they weren't but it's cool they chose a splinter i think that's neat rocky raccoon chose hydra captain our first captain america is hydra captain america which is wild Mm. i don't mind him getting rid of the unexpected betrayal ability but i'm not in love with exactly how he did this new hydra captain america but it's not bad it's not bad it's just different I, if i all. was gonna particularly legacy this cap i wouldn't legacy it as secret uh secret empire cap oh really i would i would do the like alternate triangle shield cap or like the like the sculpt makes sense but like i would do like earlier version of cap worth like the triangle shield kind of cap that's wild yeah, that's I, you mean like World War Two cap with the triangle? Yeah, shield? I just I just don't think Secret Invasion is worth revisiting as far Secret as the Empire. character goes. Yeah, Secret, nah, not Secret Invasion, Secret Empire. Yeah, I don't think that's worth revisiting for Cap. Like that is fair. I, I felt anyone, like this really. was I felt like this was done well. Sadly, this like uniform and that actual look of the <laughs> Triangle Shield is only from Secret Empire. Like yeah. he only wears it in this. It's like it's actually I didn't mind the costume very design iconic. when they very first cool when they first did it. I actually really dug the like costume yeah. redesign, and the shield was like kind of fun. But then he's like instantly the worst person in the world. So <laughs> I mean, it's yeah. kind of hard to enjoy. Once it. he but starts that's the like, point. doing the that's the, the point. Hydra stuff. Yeah, once yeah, once he does that. But when he was like when you didn't know and it was like the first cap like zero issue and then it was a few other issues of like in Civil War Two, you're like, Oh, what's he doing? What's going on here? He seems cap, he seems a little little rougher on the edges. But that is I believe that is everything for month one. It's pretty obvious. Simeon and I's winner is Uncle Sam. You know, shout out, uh, yeah, shout out absolutely. to Gun Kid. He's our winner for month one. I love him. I'm not gonna get into all the votes that people did. I actually will we'll do double back and we'll see who who ended up winning month one but moving on to month two give me a second here as i need to now look up the prerequisites the rules for month two i kind of forgot to do that kind of skipped past them whoopsies bada bing bada boom uh month two is uh, yeah having a tough time not a bug a lot design a character that fits one of the following prompts a character that uses the police team ability character that works or has worked with a government organization Uh, if you would like to meet both prompts as a personal challenge be my guest keep in mind that unlike last month there will be no bonus points for hitting both prompts so yeah like shield works because that's a government organization otherwise if they can use the police team ability in any capacity that works but you don't get bonus points for both this came with a lot of good options there's a it lot does. of people it really that, does open it wide open yeah there's a lot of people that instantly was like if like you know especially the i got surprised with a lot of the um character that has worked with the government organization because there's a lot of characters that have worked with like i think technically the jsa was a government agency at some point or at least like some oh of them probably were, world war you know, ii some there's stuff like, like that yeah, yeah there's checkmate was uh suicide squad is technically a government agency so there's like so many options that mm, filled that, that yeah, role. Suicide Squad is. Huh. yeah anyone that was shield on the marvel side yep that's like government agency so um the clicks cave he opted for the 102 um civil war storyline organized play uh iron man 
surprise piece because that that character has one pro pro registration. Pro registration. And, oh, that yeah. is very unique. So like so that just that makes sense. It does. Going down the list really quickly. I'm not going to get into everyone, of course. We just wanted to shout them out. So Two Gun Kid does the Starman from Legion of Superheroes. Wild. That's so unique. Wild yeah, pick. so wild. Yeah. Uh, Destructo Boy does Roy Harper, who had the police team ability for some reason. Interesting. Range Very cool. for 53 points, too. I know. Wild. What? It's, dude, these Golden Age picks are insane. Dragonfly, 29 to 9. Shout out Dragonfly. Staying consistent. Now does Judge Anderson to go with their Judge Hershey. I love that. I think that's very fun. And they're keeping their theme alive, which is very nice for the end game. Shout out Jedi Knight, who did another Captain America. This time, it is the Captain America from Age of Ultron, the organized play and this one has the police team ability which is very cool he also does a little more interesting flavor text and stuff with this version of captain america which i also really enjoy slade wilson does titania man who that's right worked for the soviet super soldiers so the russian government yeah uh, we already talked about clicks cave a government organization I, yes, so um, Rocky Raccoon did the Steve Rogers Police Nova Corps version, which I think is really cool. Yeah. And then, uh, Stormcrawler. I mean, we could stop at any point if we were, like, really want to talk about these guys. I actually do want to shout out Rocky Raccoon here really quickly, keeping the bank shots ability and really just making this Steve Rogers. I want to say, like, points. <laughs> as far as Rocky Raccoon's thing goes, um, that was the first one that I came I get it's a chase. And right. we don't really want legacy cards to be like chase figures. But that was the first one that I came across. Like Rick Jones from the exact same set this Steve Rogers oh, comes yes. from was already legacy card. And I would love for this Steve Rogers to be legacy card because oh, he just be awesome. All of these chase figures seemed like they got kind of shafted at some point. They all seemed like pretty high points. They just yeah. seemed a little overcosted for whatever and reason. I think that I mean, obviously, like this Steve Rogers, the 200 point uh, Black Widow, like Thor Black Widow. Oh, yeah. Obviously, like over cost. The, the Iron um, Man is getting legacy carded in Wheels of Vengeance. Will this be the that's first true. chase theme? Yeah, that, gets that Iron Man did get card? chosen. So, yeah, that 369 Goose Drank Wine uh, Thor. No one. Oh, even gosh. when he was like, I mean, even <laughs> in, like Golden Age play or like you know 400 500 point games no one plays them at 369 points no i've so tried cool. i thought that he's that so attack cool. power was super cool you know what it's not super cool against you in a mind when he has like a 22 oh, defense no. this is so sad yeah you you don't get to use his like multi-attack like if i hit i get to like hit again like you don't get to use that at all when someone's got like a 22 defense um, so yeah, like that Thor is cool. I, I've never played the Goliath, but I've played the Black Widow. I've played that Thor. I've played the Steve Rogers. Actually, I think I currently own two of these Steve Rogers. So I That's definitely hilarious. think that they should make that. Man, are you card. in, are you in Rocky Raccoon colluding? I, <laughs> one more thing I'll shout out to Rocky Raccoon. He makes a Nova core team ability. <laughs> which is hilarious, which just gives them willpower. And if they can already use it, they modify their result for it by plus one, which is just basically what you would want the Green Lantern team ability to do, I guess. So it's like, wow, go. I love the I that love is, the adding yeah. the uh, the Nova Core team ability. I also love the power of the Nova Force that he takes one damage from close attacks and he has willpower, invincible ESD, protected outwit, protected pulse wave for his defense power, which is so good. It's <laughs> so solid. So. I love I love what Rocky Raccoon was able to do here. It's really fun. Shout out to Stormcrawler for making nobody. Yeah. From Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. That's that's just funny. And shout out to Comic Junkie for making Colonel Rick Flag Jr. exactly what you mentioned, somebody from the Suicide Squad. He's still bad for fifty points. Um he's better. Yeah, he's the, still the bad. legacy that comic junkie made is better than the original but yeah oh man oh but man it's badly so yeah i think you needed to drop him to like 30 points and then give him 
police team ability and power enhancement leadership and then i'd be like oh sure i'll play this piece like he would have to be commissioner gordo levels of like dk twice for suicide squad or something for like this rick flag to be playable and he's still he's still just kind of bad um i'm gonna get a little bit into shades mar he chose cap wolf I don't know. I get that he was eventually like he was at one point part of Shield, but this version Urgh, of Cap is very imprisonment, <laughs> Un- imprisonment unlawful, imprisonment, no crime. Urgh, it's like, what? Charged with Urgh, no crime. It's very, it's very silly. Um, I love the legacy card he did for him, but I don't understand how this fits the theme because this version of Cap does not have Shield or police or anything, but he made him anyways. Uh, but it's kind of cool, got, so he gets. He's got a leadership. government attachment. He's I attached but not to when the, he was to the a government werewolf. of not werewolf when he was a werewolf. America. I I don't know. So his cool imprisonment unlawful charges no crime is leadership when he succeeds from the character the animal or monster keyword modify the attack by eight plus one and have improved movement characters this turn. That's awesome. Uh, Cap Wolf already had a special leadership. And I like this one more because his other one was like you could also remove another token, but this one just gives him a lot of cool abilities, which is fun. Still wields the shield, gives this Cap Wolf six range, two targets, and ESD. When Cap Wolf makes a ranged attack after resolutions, he can't use the trait for the rest of this game, so he just throws the shield once and he loses it. It's kind of fun. And then he has Super Soldier and Wolf Serum, Magnify Strength, and gives Cap Wolf Super Strength, Toughness, Willpower, which... I love the double rollouts top dial for Cap Wolf, but yeah, the entire dial of just Super Senses is a little tough for trying to keep him alive, and he he rolls onto some just like bad leap and climb moving, so it's kind of cool. I will say for his shield ability quote unquote is a little chase. for chase, yeah, yeah, the, for hundred point OG chase. One was like oh. him only having a trait, no special powers. Yeah, just the trait. a single he trait, still awesome. Yeah, he's still so cool and. So this one is really cool. Like giving him super strength too is so gnarly. The super strength toughness willpower is so great. I will say the only thing I would critique is the still wields the shield. Is when am I supposed to use that? Honestly, because I have charge top dial, and then after my first two clicks, I just have battle fury. So it's like I guess if I don't want to charge, I have the option. It does give me a one square extra reach versus a five square charge. I have six range, but it's just you know it's minor critique. But for the for the flow of the rest of the dial. The uh, giving him the can make an attack doesn't help, but keeping ESD totally fine. So I feel like you would never make a range attack with this guy, and you just keep ESD the whole game. Just that's all I'm saying based off the design. But yeah, I like it. I'm just saying that one part is just a little odd. Brennan Four makes the rookie Cosmo, the Cosmo many people bought by accident, thinking that that's the Cosmo that was getting a legacy. Mm. Um, good cosmo, and instead, yeah. he makes the one from yeah, Guardian uh, Galactic Guardians, the one everybody thought was getting it, but because they look similar, not even the one everybody thought. The one when we found out which Cosmo was getting it, people still sold this Cosmo as if it was and took advantage of people, which is not very cool. But then he went ahead and made this Cosmo, which is pretty cool, and I like it. And that is everyone. Was there any dial in particular you want to talk about from week two, Simeon? Uh, from week two, not. Not specifically. Not, from not week particularly. Two. Okay. Yeah. We can um we I believe we are still I'll give, on week two. I'll give so honorable mention to um I I already gave honorable mention to the, still, the, the yeah, chase Steve Rogers. Yeah, Nova. So that's so yeah. I guess we're not Steve done with week two. Nova. I apologize. Crimson Avenger uh from Collateral Damage gets a legacy from Emma Miller forty two. The Green Man makes Johnny Alpha, which is just pretty cool. I kind of dig that he made Johnny Alpha. That's kind of neat. He also makes more grenades with Johnny Alpha, so it's just kind of cool. And then Limelight makes Vulcan from the Giant Size X-Men set, which is kind of neat. And that ends our week two, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Round three prompt, the final round is, they had to think of a good one. The end justifies the means. A character that is considered an anti-hero, a character who seems to be at odds with law enforcement or the media more often than not. Super, super, super interesting. So I, I like these, I like these a lot. So let's let's jump into it, shall we? We get a white suit Magneto from UXM. 
again, Jedi Knight did this. He got off his cap train and was like, I'll do a Magneto. Pretty cool. I liked this Magneto when he came out, so it's really fun. Slade Wilson makes the Iron Man 2020. Yeah. Uh, man, that's dated now, if isn't it? That's any funny. Iron Man is worth literally cutting the point value in half, Slade Wilson. Yeah. Going from 202 points to a, a solid 100. Honestly, makes sense. Like, that Iron Man and... never, never should have been that many points, even back then. The only thing I will say is this dial is not overtly different from the other one. Actually, I don't know. It, I, it's hard to say. It gets it's the abilities get worse. The figure's better, obviously. It's half the points, um, but it's still not it's still not good. Not necessarily you have to make it good, but I will just say it's it's not it's not insanely. It's, it still wouldn't be played. The hardest part yeah, is like seeing it's a fun. printed seventeen defense. I know it's, it's pretty just, that is tough. You gave him the ESD super senses, which you definitely need. So I do like that. So you you up you upgraded it a lot, and then you realize, well, he, well, I, I will say that that is a little silly. Um, that's okay. I, I I do like him, so it's much better. It's much better. Uh, Anti venom is made by Destructive yeah, Boy. Oh, go ahead. I guess his his attack power that he gets like click one three. Um, six and seven is knockback range combat expert but then he just has printed range combat expert on clicks two and four so it's like right i have range combat expert and then i get like range combat expert with precision strike and then range combat expert yeah with knockback and then with knockback <laughs> range combat expert with precision strike and then no range combat expert for one click it's almost like like i think at that point you might as well just like give him traded knockback or traded range it's, combat expert right I don't know. something and that's why i was thinking that he got he changed the trait so the trait was originally esd force blast and he made it esd senses and so i get it it's more defensive versus a little bit but i'm like no it might as well give him knockback the whole time he found a way to give him knockback on a just different you know just on the attack power so that's one thing where maybe you could say you don't have to still make him do everything he did originally because it's very much so that he does a lot of the exact same stuff it actually is slightly worse because he got rid of his Pensai instead in lieu for just higher stats top dial, well, right? So it's Iron Man twenty twenty. So like honestly, he should have like a power action generate Despotellus for his attack power. Oh gosh, let's not. Oh boy. Oh oh, oh boy. <laughs> let's let us keep moving. So at boy, some point in comic history, they thought twenty twenty was the future. The future. The way. I mean, this is in the eighties, Simeon. They thought big old like gears for shoulder pads was the future. That's, Little that's they know we were just going to be sitting in basements talking on like Facebook. And yes, stuff. and playing tabletop simulator. Oh boy! <laughs> Keeping with the 2080, Dragonfly completes his set with Nemesis, a figure I did not realize was in Hero Clicks. It looks really cool though, man. Um, so I like that Two Gun Kid. Woos, uh, woos the audience by choosing the Fast Forces Ric Flair to Legacy. I really, really like this a lot. Yeah. So I will say he changes his special to not actually be a signature move, which. Oh, really? I didn't realize that. So much. Yeah. So it, the new trait for, for this one is Horseman Country. If. You go first. Ric Flair can use super senses, willpower, and mastermind. If you don't, when Ric Flair successfully attacks or damages a character, give him a dirty player token. Increase Ric Flair's stats by plus one for each dirty player token. When Ric Flair doesn't attack or misses, remove all dirty player tokens. So, like, okay, I don't get willpower if I don't go first, but then if I ever don't attack... That means I only get up to plus one stats because then I get plus two and the next turn yeah. I don't attack and then I clear. Like, that's kind of a tough ability. I don't understand. You got to play him with old uh, Prez Ricard. He also, like, just made him not have WWE powers. He eye gouge no longer gives him stun. It gives him precision strike and hit characters modify attack minus two and damage minus one instead, which is... 
just the exact yeah. same wording, which is the exact same wording, but instead of stun, it's precision strike. And then he, he says stealth is sneak attack. And I'm like, it's not stealth, it's nimble. Why, why would you do this to me? Um, so, yeah, and then his, it's not submission hold, it's poison. And I'm like, no, no, stop, stop. Don't don't take away WWE powers and their culture that we have. Poison, so he said yes. He, so, yeah, getting, getting he, everything into, like, he the definitely, signature yeah, move. Yeah, he printed, uh, or dialed was, like, him literally, in as poison instead I, of submission hold. I'm going to un-WWE or WWE, and it's like, oh, this is so sad. So, it's, it's like, man, it's wild. Man. I will say my favorite power that the WWE PAC, regardless of how you feel about the WWE, like making their broad day, whatever pay per view into hero clicks, submission hold was the coolest power that they brought in to like this game, a power that immobilizes two characters, deals one character one damage, like period, all full stop didn't matter if it dealt them damage it immobilized them both it was really cool that like rick flair or the undertaker or eddie guerrero or oscar like whoever could like grab the juggernaut and be like yeah put you in a like a figure four leg lock you're not going anywhere juggernaut you're just stuck here even if it didn't deal them damage like it's pretty cool yeah i agree like it's pretty it's it's just awesome it was one of the coolest powers in wwe like it was so dope it was so fun so that's rick flair an interesting take a super interesting take on of course doing a wwe character and giving them a legacy card comic junkie makes Catman, who i i do find Catman very fun he's he's hilarious he's the the anti batman sort of uh for dc's just he's catman instead so i I find i find that very fun i like that he made catman just at all then i'll say definitely big shout out stormcrawler for making a casey jones one of my favorite casey jones too so this casey jones i never knew that was a casey jones thing because i never read the comics i only saw him in like the shows and stuff so when it was like goongala goongala yeah when that first happened i was like oh yeah yeah Oh, oh come on Come on, you, you can like love a, the turtles without reading any like of the comics. Weird, it's so weird, like battle cry thing. That's it's the weird. It's it's so it, me. It's super weird battle cry. It's very strange. I don't have Google it before. Not, There's like literally no background explanation. Nothing it's just like it, huh? he just did it one time, and that just stuck. <laughs> thank you, Casey. Very <laughs> thank you, Casey. Very cool. So Casey here gets twenty points off. He gets to keep the same thing. Rules are for suckers. His actions don't count against your action total. So. Once again, you could have just said Casey Jones has autonomous. Um, yeah. Would have been the, the newer way to fix that trait. And this is just all, I think, pretty fair constructive criticism. And then it says once per game, you're in place a one in his dice roll with a six, which is gnarly. I love that. Casey Jones gets, gets to cheat really quick. And that's fun. And then he gets the Gungala Gungala trait, which is when he makes up his first attack during a turn, he modifies attack and damage value plus one. So instead of being a 10 for three, he is an 11 for four. And I've always liked this Casey Jones, even just for that first trade. I was like, this is such a cool ability. The autonomous before autonomous was a thing. So I love that Stormcrawler here also uses this Casey Jones. Yeah. I would definitely make this one unique if, if oh, 30 definitely. points. 100%. Yeah. 30 points. For 30 points, just points if he that. doesn't count towards yeah. the action total. Absolutely. Yeah, I, don't, I don't know how unique. crazy he's getting for 30 points, but the potential 11 for four multiples is, I guess it wouldn't be multiples. Uh, yeah, it wouldn't be multiples, but no, still, no. you could have you could have one eleven for four, and then the rest could be like tens for six because they all have empower. Oh yeah, all that empower. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, I mean, the first one, the first one could still be an eleven for six. With yeah. All the other power, if you, they're not making attacks quite yet. I will say, looking at Shade Smear here, he makes the zero zero eighty eight clobber in time Spider Man, the six arm Spider Man. That I'm not going to get into all of his stuff, but he apparently turns into the rookie convention LE man spider somehow. Don't know if this counts as cheating since he's doing two figures, but whatever, it's fine. It's quite fun though. Yeah, power action replace. Ah, oh, that's what it is. The whole free action now. Replace. So this this one 100% caught me off guard. Rocky Raccoon <laughs> with another chase decides to legacy. If there's ever a figure that should have been better. It's this figure, the yeah. Venom Punisher from this was what? Actually, if, yeah, this wow. was one of the ones I picked. 
Oh, like, really? Oh, wow. Yeah, because Venom Punisher 100% needs to be fixed at some point. Such a cool sculpt. It's a chase figure, and it was just... So the original is um, 12 attack for 3 damage with stealth and 18 invuln for 100 points. He has a 12 for 3, and then his 3 damage comes along with any disguise or weapon I need for why my war on crime with only a thought. He can use exploit weakness and perplex. That flavor text doesn't quite fit what I would expect. So, like, any disguise or weapon I need for my war on crime, to me, would be free. Pick a, like, a damage power and attack power. Venom Punisher can use those two powers this turn. Something like that. Any weapon he needs for his war on crime with only a thought, (laughs) and it's exploit and perplex only. It seems like a close attack is the only weapon he can think of. Because exploit doesn't work with range. Uh, and then his alien symbiote trait is he can use plasticity, shape change, automatically break away. I think that's what all of the original, like, what if, when they were very first, like, starting to do the venomized characters, that's what, like, they were doing was the alien symbiote trait. Um, yeah, Rocky Raccoon gave him improved. Movement ignores elevated, which he already had, and then symbiotic fusion, which is plasticity super senses. Uh, and then he says, if Venom Cyclops, so I think that's oh. the hint of where he got this trait. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's, that's but yeah, quite funny. essentially like the, the new Venoms. If uh, Venom Punisher is within four squares and line of fire of an opposing character, he can't be targeted by ranged attacks. That's the stuff that, that came out within like what Rise and Fall? Or was that Empire? Whatever, yes, it was Empire. Yeah, it was whatever Empire. set the, uh, the symbiote stuff. Yeah, symbiote stuff came out with like Venom Magneto. Uh, he has an, a secondary trait, a new way to fight a war. At the beginning of your turn, you may choose a standard movement or a standard attack power to use until your next turn, which seems like any disguise or weapon I need for my war on crime, with only a thought, but. He got rid of that power, and now that power is symbiotic onslaught, exploit weakness, shape change. He kept the exploit, but then Very also funny. gave him shape change because the symbiotic fusion gave him super senses. I like this like infinitely more than the original. It's twenty five point less. Oh, seventy five yes, points. Absolutely. Super senses, shape change, plasticity can't be targeted if he's within four squares of an opposing character from range attacks um with that same dial being able to choose a standard movement is huge standard it's attack so power bad. also so cool bad, like dial. yeah so i can pick hypersonic top move up hit somebody maybe move back maybe just stay next to him next turn pick uh i don't know flurry so i'm at 12 for three with 12 uh 12 for three with like exploit weakness and then i don't know pick like plasticity you know he already has plasticity so pick like sidestep or something when he's still on his top dial i don't know there's a lot of options top dial but it's it makes him way more of a threat where originally the fact that he has these huge wings and doesn't have the flight symbol he only has improved movement ignores elevated i don't know i really liked this I like him a lot. I think this is just... It's such a cool sculpt, and that's why it was always such a bummer that the dial was, like, almost unplayable. And it was a chase, and you're like, wow, this really stinks. I'd I'd rather pull the the Rachel Cole Alves than this... Oh, wait, she was from absolutely. She was actually kind of Um, fun, though. She was actually kind of a neat, fun chase. Yeah, she was from ADW, but... Yeah, I'd rather pull that chase from ADW than this Punisher from What If. Yeah, I I agree. All the other What If chases, even, like, the the venom peter parker which you're like wait we've seen this before even he's better you know he's the poison version of him i guess i should say poison peter Uh, the hulk was like that was the one to pull you were like this dude's huge he's awesome he's so cool but yeah probably maybe maybe venom thor was not he wasn't worse than punisher like he wasn't great how how is this character worse than venom and worse than thor in one dial so true so so yeah and then the last 
person is Brennan Four, and he makes Black Swan, which is really cool. Cuts her points almost in half. We have a couple of winners. So shout out to the round one winner was Shadesmere with his Professor X, which you didn't talk too much about. Round two is a tie between Shades, Shade, Mars, Cap Wolf, and Green Man's Johnny Alpha. We didn't really get into Johnny Alpha, but I definitely think that Cap Wolf des- deserved to win. And then they are currently still in the voting for round three. I didn't contabulate who it was looking like was going to win. We still have a few more days before August is over. So maybe we'll tell you next podcast who's going to win. Although I will say, just off rip, I'm seeing a lot of Ric Flair, a lot of Casey Jones votes. Yeah. So we'll see think, We'll yeah, see who wins. Casey Jones. Casey Jones is getting like be a lot Casey of like Jones. not honorable mention, but a lot of like lower tier votes. But if one and two is spread enough... Casey Jones might pull out the win by being a solid like number three for a lot. Just of a people. solid, yeah, yeah, very, very true, very true. Yeah. So that was that was this thread, Simeon, on a scale of I'm trying to give a good scale to use. Definitely going to use a legacy card scale. A scale on of a legacy scale of like pre errata. Yeah, let's do like Wonder <laughs> like Woman is Wonder the Woman one. set to uh, legacy carnage. The legacy carnage. I was gonna say like pre errata legacy Thanos or pre errata like Ooh. legacy apocalypse. So like one being any of the Wonder Woman legacies because they're all pretty rough, or ten being legacy Thanos unerratted. I don't know. I want to choose a legacy figure that was actually like, whoa, that's just so cool and amazing, and not oh a, a gross, disgustingly broken figure. Let's say Legacy Frogman, where it's like, wow, okay. you made this figure yeah. way cooler, and I love him, and he still kind of does the same thing, and he's no still no business goofy. being this this fun. Yeah, no business being this fun. How would you rank this thread? I'm actually going to be fairly generous and say I'm going to give this thread. Uh, nine out of ten frogmen's. Okay, nine, nice. nine hops out of ten because uh, I think bounce, bounce, bounce. This this thread's really bounce, fun bounce, to bounce. read through. You don't have to agree with it. Obviously, we didn't agree with most of it. I think a lot of these figures, if they were legacied as this thread suggested, they'd be train wrecks. But like that's <laughs> for some of them. Know, but I love the creativity from yeah, the community. It's which the is fact what it's all that about. people have figures where they're like, "This figure wasn't done justice originally, and it needs to be done justice." And I can see exactly, you know, looking at like the Venom Punisher, the Black Swan, um, previous things like Uncle Sam, like things that are just like really old. Ric Flair, you know, like. People look at these figures and they're like, this wasn't done justice. Let me try and do it some justice. And I think that's really fun. I think that's really cool. I like the thread. Um, There was no one in the thread that was being, like, really uh, obnoxious and bad. So that's also, like, really positive. Because most of the time when we do these threads, there's a few people that are being, like, super negative. But all these people were being pretty positive. So I didn't see anyone that... uh, we gotta get after, you know. Even the even uh, old Stormcrawler who suggested nobody, even though you suggest a terrible character, you're you're doing good, right? I I now that I think about it, I think Stormcrawler did all Ninja Turtle characters. They did Splinter, Nobody, and Casey Jones. That's that quite makes fun. Sense. They didn't do a single. <laughs> they didn't do a single turtle. <laughs> Be incredible. Love it. Love to see it. I love it. Disgusting That's turtles. I don't like them. They're green. They don't look like you or me. <laughs> I don't know. Don't know if we keep that. Anyways, I I will rank this a... I'll rank it a Squirrel Girl, which I think is my 8 out of 10, where it's quite fun. You You did some different things with it that I wasn't expecting, but it's still a really cool figure, and I'm glad that it's modern. So that's how I'm going to rank this thread. I hope they keep doing yeah. these legacy card ones. They're much easier to enjoy than just the make it say, dial. The make it dials are just so they get so out of hand. Yeah, and they get this is so also a, a wild. much better thread than the average thread that we would go over because oh, so true. Um, yeah, it's just it's not so much that like we can critique it easier or whatever. It's like. This is just simply what people in the game like. I can tell you like this figure, and you just want it to be better. 
And that's so much easier for me to wrap my head around than you pumping and dumping, like, you know, getting rid of a Serpent Society member so you can pump, like, the Max or some random character that doesn't belong in comics or whatever. Right. So it's super fun. I love it. I'm so happy that uh, HC Realm... I'm not going to say HC Realms is healing. It's a step in the right direction, though. Realms. You're, we're, Still? Just, I'm not, I'm not going to lie. Joe's trying to like make some progress, but HC Realm still has the best forums for like hero click stuff. Like, as far as like if I go to a website and they have actual people going back and forth, HC Realms is the most active forums. Ninety percent of them aren't worth looking at, and then also, out of that last ten percent, like there's probably like ninety nine point nine percent still not worth looking at, but occasionally you find a gem. And I think Creative Corner, for the most part, is people that actually care about the community and want to see cool stuff in the community. So, Creative Corner is definitely like the place to hang out if you're going to hang out anywhere. Yeah, I 100% agree with that. Creative Corner, is, it's just the best. Let's go ahead and jump into a couple of listener questions. There are dozens of us! Dozens! These are all coming from our Discord. If you want to go ahead and join the Discord, you can donate $5 to our Patreon. That'll get you access to the Discord, behind-the-scenes content, early releases of videos, and so much more, as well as giveaway entries and play in some bad same with us monthly. It's a ton of fun. It's a grand old time. We'd love to have you here. All of these, of course, are in our questions for the show tab, which everybody was so polite as to not have discussion in, and I love them for it. They're the best. <laughs> First one is his own Bill, and he asks, what characters most deserve to get a prime that have never had one? You don't have to say Dr. Doom if you don't want to. Thanks, Bill. We appreciate it. Man, I, I never would have said Dr. Doom, to be honest. I probably wouldn't have either. I, uh, apolog- apologies. Apologies, Bill. Yeah. Dr. Doom will definitely get a, a prime at some point. But he's currently, well, not currently, but after rotation, he's going to be the only Fantastic Four property character in modern. Besides, nope, yeah, he will be the only Fantastic Four character only in like modern. Fantastic Four proper character, because like, yeah, proper. I mean, there's Namor, Spider Man, um, and stuff. Or I guess him. Yes, there will be a Fantastic Four Spider Man. I guess you're correct, but he'll be the only like yeah, Fantastic Four proper character. Like Man. member of F four, I mean, member of Bill Latveria. thinks he's got it bad because like Doom has never been a prime, but um, Wolverine never went on a hiatus, and he also has never been a prime. Oh, very true. So like he's very true. Literally, like he's in Web of Spider Man. He's in Giant Size X Men. He's in the Incredible Hulk. You put, you put Wolverine wherever, yeah. anywhere. He's on. This dude's Wolverine is not just an insane amount of teams. He's it's just he's wild. in every set for the most part, and there's never been a prime version. So, I mean, mm, it is kinda... never never a prime named Wolverine. There may have been like a prime at some point, but I, I don't honestly, I don't think there was ever a prime. Just like period, like, like sure, Logan, yeah. or anything. Yeah, he's uh, he's only had a few super errors. He's only had one or two chases. Like, Old Man Phoenix was his chase. Right. Um, yeah, there's really just not a lot. Like, most of the time, he doesn't break out of the uh, the old rare area. Well, yeah. And if he does, like... So you want you want Wolverine to be a prime? I I mean, I think I think a... Uh, not necessarily so he's Wolverine. A... I think okay. a Romulus as a prime Ro- Okay, interesting. Yeah. The prime of a Wolverine. I don't know who Romulus is. I... I'm unaware of Romulus. Uh, at, like, take Wolverine's claws, add one coming out of the bottom and one coming out of like the side, and now that's right. Oh, you've talked to me about this guy. Yeah, yeah I don't yeah. like that. I don't like his claw placement. It don't. I don't. Yeah, it's very oh, odd. Romulus and Remus, the uh, the old familiar people from Roman see, Empire or whatever. Interesting. It was a weird, uh, the, weird time for Wolverine. The prime. I'll go for is that the A version will be 
It can be any version of Captain America. I just want the Prime to be Bucky Cap. I want I want to see old Bucky Barnes slinging the shield again. It has been going on ten years now since we've had a Bucky Barnes Captain America. So I'd, he'd be a fine Prime. I think he'd make sense. Next question. I do love this question. Alex the Enchanter asks, if you had a Hero Clicks fever dream, now I do want you to answer this as if it is a fever dream, and made a set, what would the chase theme be? I'm going to assume this has to be a Marvel or DC set, even though it's a fever dream and technically it could be anything. Let's just, let's, let's make the fever part how wild the chases are. Simeon, what All are right. your fever dream chases? Because I'm sitting here with Red Guardian from the Avengers Forever set, and I just pulled his arm out of socket with his shield. Oh my, my fever dream chases are unique Avengers or X-Men or, like, just, just characters in general with weapons or, like, effects. And I'm pulling their arms off, and I'm replacing them with other arms. So, like, now this Red Guardian has... Ah, uh, I see. Wolverine I hand. see. And then I, the okay. has a shield instead of his I, claws. Um, binary has, I instead of a, a laser blast, here. she has uh, a handful of cards that are all charged up. I see. I see what you're doing. Very funny. Very nice. That's that's my Very, dream. That's truly a feverish, a feverish dream. My fever dream is to do an entire chase theme of pixelated characters not in the way they did in the ninja turtles not the ninja turtle way where they're a bunch of little dots yeah, i want them to actual be actual 2d i want them to be a flat piece with little pixels printed on the flat piece like when you go to a convention and there's that person who's selling perler beads i want them to just yeah, be that when they're actual, flat like, yeah 2d flat a 2d flat and i want them to be the captain america and the avengers just vision iron man uh, Cap and Hawkeye, maybe throw in Wasp, Wonder Man, whoever else, you know. But that's who I want so badly. When we found out that the Cap set was going to be called Captain America and the Avengers, that's what I ideally wanted as the chase theme. And I still want them to use this as the chase theme sometime. I love the pixel characters, but I think making them flat is cooler than making them 3D and kind of ugly. <laughs> so, yeah. Next question is also from Ism Bill. He asks, with the first really consequential rotation since the introduction of the Silver Age format, what do you think the effect will be on the prices of rotating pieces? Will they plummet in value, or will our collections actually hold value now? So we've we, already kind of talked yeah, about this a little bit last episode. Yeah. But to reiterate, apparently plunging in value is still going to happen because people are selling. It's still a uh, seller's market, and people are trying to get rid of Sicarian Iron Man left and right. Like, he's been the one that's been selling the right. most out I of anyone I've seen on Facebook. Instead of seeing the like 50% drop within a couple months of like rotation announcement, and then like... Because what it used to be, it would be like a 50% drop of like competitive pieces within like the rotation announcement. And then until the last viable like setting you could play them, you would still, still up until that like last vestige of this character being good, see them going for like 50% of like their original or like last like top dollar. Right. So Scarry and Iron Man like maybe going for like 75 and then he would eventually drop to like 25 at some point they'd go to like a final like one third of like their original price or something i think in silver obviously they're not going to hold their value like totally because silver is not a one-to-one -one with 300 modern but i do think silver might like retain 50 percent of a value for a figure which Maybe not be huge for modern age figures that are rotating, but what it might be huge for is legacy cards that are attached to a set that Ooh. are rotating. Because if I have yeah. like a legacy card figure, like the the KC Green Lantern right now is going for just buku bucks, like insane amount. Like I wish I had bought one back when he was going for only a hundred, because he's going for like almost two hundred right now. He's insane. And after rotation, like, he will be the cheapest Green Lantern, period, for your team. Which is probably part of the reason why he's going for a lot. When he rotates, when Batman 
team up rotates, I think his value will drop quite a bit, probably down to like 25, maybe 30. He's still a very collectible piece, but I think it'll drop down to like somewhere below 50. I can see that. The fact that he's attached to a legacy card, though, is like... I not say that he's going to get legacy carded again, but it's like, no, probably not. He he will be at least viable in silver now, which is insane. Like that a, a figure that old can be part of modern, a big part of modern, and then potentially a huge part of silver for just forever. Yeah, I'd agree with that. I hope we don't see a lot of silver. People start caring about silver when Huntington's starts up again. Yeah. And then silver is kind of some side events. So I do think our collections still have value. I just think when it comes to the super hyper competitive stuff, it's always going to take a hit no matter what, because modern is the cream of the crop, the main event, all that stuff. So I think our stuff isn't taking as big of a hit this year, but it's still going to be, it's it's still going to be people are going to go crazy and just try to make that quick buck and we're seeing that right now. I don't think securing Iron Man's value stays at like the $50 burn it down sales we're seeing, but it might, you know, but he's still an insane piece and I think he still think he'll still be insane in silver. So, we'll see. Overall, I think our collections will hold more value with the inclusion of legacy cards and silver. Luke 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 asks, knowing now that rotation will be happening after Worlds and going all the way up to Disney Plus, what keywords do you think will be taking the biggest hit? He says, poor as guardians are down to only 13 figures. That's kind of sad and funny at the same time. Yeah. With the War of the Realms rotating. Yeah, I, I think as guardians taking a huge hit. Um, guardians themselves. Even though there oh, wasn't yeah. like a ton of like guardian team ability characters, that's like fairly we have, team ability. We have Mantis, Drax, and Star Lord. Yeah, it's a handful of other. It's, it's very low. Already There's taking like a big, no fairly big hit, galaxy. even though it only has been oh, around rough. for a couple of years. Um, I'd love for that team ability to get like more prominence and to get like a full cosmic set or cosmic adjacent set kind of thing going That'd be on. Cool, but. I I just doubt it at this point. Like, if it happens, it'll probably be like way too far gone for this set to actually, or what's currently modern, I should say, to actually matter because it does definitely seem like the current modern guardians are going to be gone. Um, man, what's some other things that are taking a big hit? I mean, obviously, uh, DC is taking a fairly good sized hit. I think Batman team up is Man. the only legal set. Justice which... League. There yeah. ain't no Justice League anymore, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, that's that's a tough hit. Uh, Harold notorious. Harold like, takes right after a rotation. Tough hit. I- ironically, Harold, a great keyword, takes a huge hit as you mentioned oh, earlier. Yeah, true. Almost gets wiped in half because Fantastic Four had a huge load of Harolds and. And, of course, Wonder Woman 80th had, like, the first set DC Heralds in quite a while. So, yeah, that that keyword almost gets wiped in half. Ugh. I will say there's still two Avengers sets in Modern, but, like, some insane Avengers heavy hitters are rotated out. The Swap Cap is rotated out. The All the, like, the normal Vision, the Scary and Iron Man, Scarlet Witch, obviously freaking 19 defend wanda the avengers taxi of scarlet witch um from war of the realms and all the war of the realms like commons and uncommon avengers are all rotating like avengers takes a big hit you know they take a big hit because they can afford to take a big hit i guess like they were already a big sub theme and now they're losing a ton of their sub their theme and so it feels like a big hit but really they'll be fine but man they lose a lot of good pieces there's like no Avengers taxi in modern right now. I want to say, yeah, pretty much none. Kind of wild. I can't mean, really th- outside think of, of like Falcon. He's not a great. Yeah, taxi, but he just. But yeah, like, he just. I meant like that carries multiples. You know, yeah. he just carries no, the, the one. I mean, dude. there's not a big manifold. I think has it. I from guess the he has like two people though, place. isn't he? He's, He's like yeah, two he only or carries like three. two. Ugh, two people, man. Which at least Voyager, she carried four. Yeah, carried two, I think, two or three. Yeah, man, that's rough. 
three carry four plus or don't carry at all, man. Come on. I carry mean, at two. this point, yeah, basically it's just kind of. I mean, really, but uh, that's okay. Next up, Alex the Enchanter asks: The new Pet Avengers comic, Unleashed, seems to be off to a good start, and it makes me wish the keyword got more love. What underrepresented team needs more love in Hero Clicks? Timia, start. Oh man, uh, Serpent Society could use some some more love. Um, honestly, that's Sinister true. Syndicate could use some more love. Um, Defenders has been severely oh, man. lacking. Defenders, yeah. And then uh, when we were looking at that new man thing from uh, Wheels of Vengeance, the Legion of Monsters sub theme has literally had like in the last probably seven years has had a total of four characters made and before that like Damn, it was literally it just is. the the amazing spider-man set that's the only so, like th- like set that actually gave them anything because after that it was like one character in fear itself one character in guardians of the galaxy one character in deadpool and the x-force one character in avengers defenders war so yeah it's like that legion of monsters if they're going to keep making those kind of characters which obviously this new man thing has that keyword uh, right of midnight course. suns they just made a new video game based on the midnight suns and like we don't have a <laughs> solid actual modern midnight suns team where it's like here's your like doctor strange like a shifting focus doctor strange is cool from adw Ah, oh, he's so awesome. We I have not gotten a Doctor Strange that can do all the things since then. And we like, That is true. The newest one is good at what he does, um, but he doesn't have that keyword. The the one from Beyond Amazing is good, but he's he's expensive. Uh yeah. yeah. Got that blade with the rally six where he just doesn't ever die if he oh, has he's a six so on awesome. him. That's kind that of blade cool. is so so annoying when you play against him. So he's, awesome when you play him. If you could like if you were playing in War of the Realms Battle Royals somehow and you just got like past two of those blades, you're just like half your team's just never dying. Yeah. No one's ever you're scoring. Doing, you're that. good. You're living forever. So the keywords I say that definitely need some help are invaders. We are going to lose almost all of our invaders that aren't just Bucky and Captain America. Uh, no, wait, let me check. Yeah, we're going to lose all of our invaders that aren't Bucky and Captain America. And even then, that was just Namor and Human Torch. So it's Jeez. kind of rough to see our invaders go. I would love to see some invaders. On the DC side of things, I would love to see more Suicide Squad. We have very little. And I know we're getting Polka Dot Man. Um, and we have Peacemaker, but it's still so little Suicide yeah. Squad members. I would like to see some more. I would like to make it feel like it is a, a team ability that's used. The Justice Society of America, the JSA, could use a few more Justice Society pieces. Shout out Freedom Fighters as well for Uncle Sam. Could use could use that. I'd love some of that. Also, th- shout out one more DC one, the Outsiders. But the cool outsiders, not Red Hood and his band of misfits. Um, I'm sure that's fine, but he's that's not my outsiders. And then Guardians of the Galaxy, of course. Guardians of the Galaxy is really hurting right now. We just talked about that. And then a keyword that I would love if it existed, slash a team that isn't necessarily a keyword, but we still don't have this full team, is the Captain America Corps. Yep, that's right. I got to mention the Captain America Corps yet again on another episode. Oh, my gosh. We still need American Dream, and we still need Isaiah Bradley's great-great-grandson. His name's just Commander America, by the way. So that's I, I looked it up. I looked it up between episodes. It's called Character Growth. So we still need – We still it should be a keyword. Give it to every Captain America ally before people say – we don't get enough. We actually do. There's actually an insane amount of Captain America allies that don't also have the soldier keyword that should be able to be played together, but aren't able to play together. And it's so sad. You spider people don't understand. You don't understand how nice it is. Come on, please. Anyways, that groveling is over. I think we all said a lot of keywords that definitely need some help. So let's see. Hopefully, hopefully we get more love in the future. I don't know. We'll see. Ladies and gentlemen, 
That's the whole episode. That's what we got for you. Hopefully, you enjoyed it. If you did, think about supporting us on Patreon. I already did the plug for that like 20 minutes ago, so just go back if you really want to do it again. Link in the description to our Patreon if you want to join and help support the show. If you want to support the show without financial aid, please leave a review for the show. It's a huge help. It lets more people see that, hey, this is a quality HeroClix podcast. So leave a five-star review on iTunes or leave whatever review you think is fair for us. It's it's cool. We'll just, we'll just take a review at this point, honestly. iTunes, Podbean, Spotify, wherever you can leave a review, wherever you listen to this podcast. And, of course, if you haven't already subscribed to our YouTube channel, make sure to go and do that. That is also a huge help with supporting Dial H for HeroClix. Subscribe to the YouTube channel, like the videos, hit that bell notification, comment on the videos whenever you think of a fun thing to comment on and like always guys thank you so much for your support simeon how else can they support dial h for hero clicks oh they can do it a lot of ways they can support us by supporting those who support us so they can go to coolstuffinc.com and use code dial five to save five percent off of their orders and then cool stuff inc has the coolest stuff including the latest HeroClick singles and sealed products. I mostly buy board games at, from them at this point, but they also have kind of pretty good single prices. And then if you want to go direct to the source, you can go to shop.wizkids.com and use Dial H10 to save 10% off of HeroClick's orders, not including Iconics or specialty marquee figures. But yeah, use code Dial H. 10 and you'll get 10 percent off of like bricks and stuff like that at that store and yeah if supporting them will support us if you don't want to go to any of those stores you can still just go to our youtube comment like subscribe hang out and you get free stuff by doing most of that we do a lot of free giveaways on our youtube so just by hanging out in our youtube commenting and subscribing and being a part of our little group you will get free stuff most of the time not always it's kind of a raffle system but you at least get entered and yeah if you don't want to pay for anything that's the free way to do you know the bare minimum and you still get stuff for it so it's kind of cool and like always happy trails and remember, we'll see you at World September 13th Wednesday night, the Dial H welcome event. Be there, be there, be there. Be there, be there, be there. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional hero clicks now. Are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like 100? That's how numbers work. Over oh, yeah. six how people think I am funny. I'm your Captain America. That was just you in a costume. Well, the rest of this case uh, doesn't matter at all. I'm from Canada. Yeah. 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 My bones yeah. are metal. Are you kidding? <laughs> wow, wow, wow. If you're not around, you'll be square. <laughs> Calder will be doing his uh, Cirque du Soleil ribbon dancing where he hangs suspended 30 feet in the air by ribbons attached to his ankles and slowly descends via dance. Yeah, I'll, I'll, uh, yeah, I'll do that, I guess. I, I guess. I don't know if the ceilings are that high, but... They're pretty high. They're probably that high. 20 feet? Yeah. If you started from the top... 20 feet. They're definitely 20 feet high. Started from the they're top. Way more, they're way more than 20 feet. Started from the top, now now we're here. Yeah. Oh, boy. That means it's only <laughs> down. Yeah. <which> is, <laughs> now we're here being like, you you can't, you eventually got to the ground. We're not going to say oh, out, yes, but... of course. I'm safe. Yeah. I'm safe. Yeah. Safe, totally. Yeah, you got to the ground safely. Spectacular. Everyone clapped, I'm sure. <laughs>